It's game day, Wisconsin. David Gilroy from the three. 25, 30, 35, it's close midfield. A chance to return the opening kickoff for six. He'll take it to the house. It's blocked unbelievably. Wisconsin with a chance to pounce. Touchdown, Badgers. Unbelievable. Simply shocking. Start there. Touchdown. Taylor slips to an opening, and Taylor into the secondary. Jonathan Taylor, can he take it to distance? He can. Touchdown, Badgers. Live from the best college football town in the world, this is ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day. It is a special live stream edition of ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day, brewed by Coors Light, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. It may be the holiday season. Me and Brad Nortman might be in our parents' basements, but damn it, we're live for the Guaranteed Rate Bowl as we get you ready. And uh, we'll be with you the entirety of the Guaranteed Rate Bowl as 6-6 six and six Wisconsin takes on 7-5 and five Oklahoma State. Hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend, everybody. I'm Alex Strope, uh, live from, like I mentioned, my parents' basement in Green Bay, Wisconsin, alongside Brookfield legend, Badgers legend, NFL legend, and the recently retired, as of this morning, the great Brad Nortman is here as always. Brad, good to see you, buddy. Hope you had an awesome holiday weekend. I did. I really did. It was a great you know, Christmas season. It's been a wild strofe. It's been even before Thanksgiving that you and I were together doing this. Oh, so it's been some time. That so hurts. I know. It does, doesn't it? Um, it's been great, though. It's been a great time. Um, Christmas is great. Seeing family. Lots of Christmas cookies and presents exchanged and, and all good stuff. I... I'm ready for a Wisconsin bowl game, though. It has been an eventful month. I'm, I want to see what we can put on the field and what kind of uh, product we have out there. Luke Fickle's first time. I'm, I'm interested to see what this dynamic looks like. Who's kind of in charge? There it is. There's our new guy, our new fearless leader. What's this dynamic going to look like for this game? Um, it, it'll be interesting. We'll have a lot of future guys out there on the field, and I'm just ready for my Wisconsin Badgers to play. I'm going through some withdrawals over yeah, the last Yeah, me too. Yeah, I am. It's it's been uh it's been a long couple of weeks, but obviously an eventful couple of weeks. You mentioned the Luke Fickle era begins tonight for the Badgers. Very exciting. First off, that man has me fired up. We'll get into that plenty in, uh, uh, tonight. Uh, but also like quarterback controversy. No more Graham Mertz as he's a Gator now down in Florida. Uh, so will it be Miles Burkett? Will it be Chase Wolf? The game's supposed to kick off in nine minutes. We still don't know the answer to that question, which makes me very excited. Uh, Colin Russo's. From uh, somewhere in Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken. Colin, great to you. Uh, you're feeling better, which is good to see. You've got a Hawaiian shirt on. Uh, bring me up to speed. What What's new in the, the, the world of Colin Russo? Yeah, I've been uh, – I've actually been – I was knocked out the past few days. I actually had to spend the entirety of my Christmas confined to my room. Couldn't be near the family. Wasn't involved. Wasn't really till yesterday that I really started to turn the corner. I got tested for everything. Negative, negative, negative. All good now. The uh, fever subsided. But now I'm back. I got to – it's, it's going to be – it's 10 o'clock here already. And this game's not going to get going for another 30 minutes. So it's going to be a late one in the Russo household. Uh, let's just say I'll be the only one up starting in about 30 minutes. So I'm going to have to make it's, sure. It's past 10 o'clock. You sure it's not past Mad Dog's bedtime at this point? I think he is. Uh, I think he's sleeping right now. So uh, yeah. if I if I wake him up, I swear that's not going to be good for any of us. Might be good for the stream. Won't be good for <laughs> me. So uh, we're going to try to avoid that. But um, ultimately, I'm excited for the game. There's a lot of questions that ultimately like we're going to be led in the direction of what's really going on. I'm curious to see what the offense does. Uh, you know, are they going to be focused on running the ball or are they actually going to incorporate more passing situations, more di differentiated passing? Have they added the opportunity to actually implement anything? Uh, there's a lot of questions. I'm excited for the game. So uh, I'm excited to be here and I'm happy that I'm healthy for it. Over 30 of you with us on Twitter, over 20 of you with us on Facebook, over 20 of you with us on YouTube. Do me a favor, tweet out the link, give it a retweet, share it on Facebook, whatever platform you're with us on. Also type it in the comments. What city are you watching from? I'm in Green Bay. Brad's in uh, Brookfield. Freaking Collins in Connecticut. Hunter Ball in Connecticut. The <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's Wisconsin, Oklahoma State. It's being played in Arizona. I, I just don't understand how Connecticut fits into the equation. That's why I'm 
I'm dunking on uh, Connecticut a little bit. Hunter Vaughn's the only one that actually showed up to work today, though. He is uh, downtown Madison at the Park Bank ESPN Madison Studios. Hunter, happy Tuesday. You're wearing your Buffalo plaid, which I learned was a term this week. I learned that over the Christmas. Buffalo plaid. Something over Christmas. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, though, Hunter. The Buffalo plaid, that's like the... The, the fabric of the season, dude. I mean, check check out that flannel, fellas. That is the that is the fabric I'm stylish, of stylish. What can I say? Very stylish. I'm sure your wife definitely dresses you and, and may have may have picked that dress. Maybe. May have. Um, all right. So a couple things we need to tell you about before we eventually kick this game off, which which by the way, uh, is scheduled to happen in six minutes. I don't think it's happening in six minutes. As uh what's the bowl game that's on right now? I know Eastern Carolina's winning. What is the actual bowl game, Brad Nortman? Ah, uh, I couldn't even tell you. I think it's in Birmingham. It's the I know Ticket that. Smarter Birmingham Bowl again. The Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. Oh. Not good branding. I couldn't even come up with it. I've had it on the background now for a while. Yeah, as of I. So that's that shows how much we pay attention. That might be a common theme tonight. Uh, Colin <laughs> Russo is going to play Bucky Badger for us tonight. Every point the Badgers score, Colin Russo's dropping down and giving us seven. And then 14, and then 21. And then when Miles Burkett puts up five more touchdowns, oh, he'll yeah. be dropping down and, and giving us uh, qu- quite a few. Uh, Justin Knox checking in from San Diego. Let's go, Stroke. Let's go, Justin. Great uh, city. Tom- Tommy says, wow. Wow. San Diego is a great city. Great Wonderful city. city. Uh, a lot of Badger alum out there, is my understanding. Always a good, always a good turnout for the Rose Bowl. Brad, was there always a, a wonderful Wisconsin turnout at the Rose Bowl? Oh my gosh! Are you kidding? It was it was amazing. I mean, the Wisconsin fans travel; they are loyal to their programs, and especially when you get through Christmas, you get to that early part of midwinter. Wow! Any chance you can go get some sun? Uh, the, the Wisconsin fans traveled. We traveled really well to even the bowl games that were not as flashy as the Rose Bowl. I was in the Champ Sports Bowl twice before oh. then. Both Where's times that? Where was that played? That was Orlando. And does Champ Sports still exist? Uh, and currently, does it still yeah, exist? Like, like, are they still in every mall in America? I I think they are I still so. exist. I think so. They don't host a bowl game anymore. I think that game is now. I think that went to the Cheez It Bowl now. So it just goes to show that Orlando. Not the Cheez It's Bowl, which somebody Cheez- yelled about today. I, I Cheez yeah. It's 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 plural. It's, it's, no 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 no. It's not plural. There's no such thing as Cheez It's. Is what I've been informed as of. Wow. Now. Read that on Twitter, which you know everything you read on the internet is is accurate. So anyway, okay. Orlando, good good Badger turnout. Yeah, great, great Badger turnout. It was always a bunch of red around there, which is awesome. I mean, because you're you're doing a bunch of bull prep things before then, right, with all the uh, festivities and right. events and things like that. So it's just cool to walk around the city, a city that you're not usually accustomed to seeing Badger fans in, and they're everywhere. And, and we really did out-travel the teams I played against. So it's, um, it, it's just cool to see. As a player, it's encouraging. It's encouraging to see the fan turnout. And to know that the the fans travel well and that it feels a bit like a home game, honestly, yeah. no matter where you're at. Like, do you think, though, Brad, do you think a game like this when the team is six and six, it's obviously in sunny Phoenix, which is appealing. But is, is there going to be a big turnout for, for what is what is it even called? It's, we have known for three weeks. Guaranteed rate bowl, right? Guaranteed rate bowl. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I think there's going to be a, a little bit of a turnout more than what Oklahoma State would have, because, OK, are the Wisconsin faithful? going to travel from Wisconsin to Arizona for this game, pony up the cash, probably right. get stranded with all that's going on with the Southwest Airlines. Uh, probably have their flights. I did see that. Wow, you are really in tune with uh, current Come on. Airlines have been a disaster. Airlines, yeah. a total nightmare. How, how was your flight to Connecticut? It was smooth. I got lucky. I got lucky. You know, I was in like 28C and, uh, you know. Wait, 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 wait. 28C being the seat you sat in? Yeah. And no, why, did we, why did we need to know that information? <laughs> right, right. Okay. So <laughs> it was an Nile? easy flight. But honestly, like people like. Yeah, window seat? What was it? That's an aisle, right? Is yeah, that an aisle? It was an aisle. Okay. I got lucky. I like it. You got to go with an aisle. I'm a big aisle guy. I, I don't yeah, usually a, get the aisle. I'm an aisle guy too because I'm 6'3", but like I also enjoy the, you know, the views of the window seat. But then you're smushing. Can't have it all, like Stroke. Can't, can't, that's a good point. Can't man. have it all. Can't have it all. Well, we, we I wish I was more like you, Brad Norman, because you've flown on private jets before, no doubt about it. Ah, uh, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never had a PJ lifestyle, man. That's, uh, that's what I miss out. Sorry, Colin. Continue yeah, your please. airline Brad, round. Brad, you were, you, you were drafted. Did they send you a jet, or did you, they get you out there commercial? No, that was commercial. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. That's only for the first round draft pick, maybe second. Really? I thought yeah. okay. I, I thought maybe they get the date, the day three guys together on the plane. Weren't, weren't you a fifth round pick? I was a sixth round pick, yeah, and it you're wasn't. It wasn't not even, even, you're not even close to Mister Irrelevant, Terry. Yeah, guys, it wasn't even first class. It was like oh, they it stuck was a, you in coach, in coach, in coach. That's how I, I stayed. Thirty four B. I stayed like, humble throughout this process. <laughs> but then, Colin Russo, you're going to appreciate this. I go to free agency, right? Signed with the Jags. It's all arranged. PJ, PJ. Then not PJ, but first class. Okay. okay. We first we'll class. That. Chad Khan. Jags, man. I mean, they're showing the fruit of it now, right? We're almost play. We're going to get into that in the show. A little bit of Jags. Oh, stuff. we got uh, Brad. We got over four hours. We're going to get. Into that. <laughs> that'll be that'll be during my bathroom break. I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm not talking Jags. I want to talk Packers, but we're here to talk Badgers, baby. <laughs> Packers are making the playoffs. We are aware of this, right? I think we got two Jags guys who want to break down the Jags making the playoffs rather than the Packers potentially. The Packers need a lot. Uh, they need to win those games. I don't know. The Jags, they just need to win one. They who do they got? Win. Who do they got left? Well, they got Houston. That it's a, it's a meaningless game next week for both sides because gotcha. the last game against Tennessee is a winner takes the division, loser probably misses the playoffs anyway. So it's really that Week 18 matchup uh, with Tennessee visiting Jacksonville. Oh, man. I, I... A playoff game, basically an early playoff game in Jacksonville. Forget about it. That's and the winner gets a home game. Yeah. A home game, Strofe. The 9-8 and eight we Jags. Done? We done yet? <laughs> hey, talk, talk to me about Luke Fickle. Talk to me about Miles Burkett. Talk to me about Nick Evers. I, Evers. I do have a question for Brad about bowl week. Bowl week, you got a month between the last game. Depends if you're playing in a championship. Really between that and the bowl game. When do you get out there? When you fly out there, are you there a week earlier? Are you trying to get acclimated? Where do you practice? What's the week look like leading up to the game? Great question. Great question. Love it. Um, bowl week is great. One of the reasons why I was rooting for this team to make a bowl game, not only to keep the streak going, but bowl week is great. It is such a great reward for a long season. You know, you start off and you get into the rhythm of the weeks, right? I mean, it's just kind of Groundhog Day week after week, and you get into a good rhythm. You get bowl eligible, it gets announced, and there's a bit of a lull in the action, right? You slow things down, you kind of ramp up you know, strength and speed and conditioning. You, you ease into bowl prep. It's a chance for guys to get healthy and recover. And, you know, there's a sense of excitement. There really is. It, when you go out on the field for the bowl game and not playing for a month, there's a renewed sense of excitement, nerves, sure. the nerves that you felt week one. And then maybe you don't feel them as palpable each week when you're in week seven and then week 10. There's a renewed sense of nerves and excitement because everything looks and feels different. There's a weird finality to the end of the game. You know that the guys that you're in the locker room with and taking the field with, it's going to be the last time you're going to do it and get a graduating class. Now there's even more craziness with transfers in, transfers out. So in general, it's a really nice period to just really enjoy the team enjoy the guys, and get ready for a celebration. Because that's what a lot of the bowl week is. You usually fly out a week early. So I'm guessing that they flew out the 20th, roughly. And, you know, for the for the Rose Bowls that I played in, that means we're flying out Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So just kind of a fun change-up, right? A very different Christmas that you get to have. When you get there, you get to the bowl week, you get the, the bowl swag. This is what my NIL used to be, was bowl gifts. That used to be the big reward. That goes to show how far college football has gotten, right? Now these guys are getting cold, hard cash. I would get excited for a sweatshirt. Can I get a sweatshirt and a duffel bag, please? So, I mean, they just load you up with full swag. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. You feel like you get treated, right, as a, as a college kid. You go out there. Usually they put you up in a really nice hotel, which is great. There's events all throughout the week. Luckily – you know, I'm, they're in Phoenix, so they probably had a lot that they could do. In prior years, they've been in New York City, in Miami, Dallas, Texas. Yeah. The Badger football team has been lucky to be in some really cool cities. They could be in Birmingham, Alabama. No disrespect to Birmingham. That Alabama. sounds like disrespect to Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> no, I mean, I no disrespect. You, I don't think you however. can say no disrespect after you're like, hey, they could be in the worst city in America, Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Right? Usually like when you say no disrespect, you probably meant some disrespect. Yeah, no doubt, right? Um, so, you know, you you go in the bowl game, and there's just so many events. It's so fun. There's all these different things that you'd explore in the city that they put on for you. Early in the week, I'll say this, 
if you're under 21, it's kind of limited what you can do, right? I mean, a lot of guys that are 21 or older use the first couple nights, usually no curfew. You go out and have a good time. You go out and have some drinks, trying to get in any trouble. Uh, and and the coaches, they don't even um, they don't even discourage that. I would say. I think they know that. Look, these are college kids. The ones that are 21 and older, they're they're men, right? They're well on their way. So we need to trust them. And yeah, you know, luckily we had guys that were in good shape to do so. But earlier on, it's a lot more loose, a lot more. Um, you know, party centric, I guess you could say it, where you're doing the festivities, you're going okay. out to dinner, you're having a good time. And then it, it dials in. By the time you're in the last few days leading up to the game, it feels like the normal rhythm of game week. I'd say, the, I'd say like the three days leading up to it, it's like, okay, this feels like our normal rhythm. That uh, weekend leading up to it, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. A couple of housekeeping uh, notes to, to take care of real quick here on uh, ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day Live, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Share it, retweet it. Send it to your friends. Send it to your parents, like me and Brad Nortman did as we sit in their uh, respective basements of their homes. Uh, well, oh, Colin Russo also in his parents' basement, but that's correct. Uh, but you're you're still a college kid, so like that's not as abnormal. I think Brad literally went over to his parents' house just so he had cable. Yeah, I, I'm a millennial. I stream. <laughs> I stream things, and I I've, well, it's a big deal that we're on the same page and couldn't take the risk. So. My parents have uh, have cable, reliable cable service, and I'm a millennial. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. when I said housekeeping notes, I meant uh, Brad Nortman's uh, millennial agenda. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, so the kickoff time has been moved. Uh, coming up next on ESPN TV, 1025 Eastern to 925 if you're in the wonderful state of Wisconsin like Brad and I are, 1025 if you're on the East coast like uh, like Colin Russo is um, now also uh, another little uh, note uh, that I did not see prior to our broadcast tonight this is from Colton Bartholomew who's all over the Badger beat for the Wisconsin State Journal uh, said Chase Wolf is starting tonight for the Badgers but don't be surprised to see Miles Burkett as well unless Wolf is having a great game so as maybe we expected uh, we will be seeing both quarterbacks very likely tonight but Chase Wolf uh, will lead the way <clears throat> for the Badgers, it looks as if, and Hunter Vaughn, if you want to jump in here, I, I know you're, you sent me a note on it. Um, so so is this game on ESPN2 now, or it will be yes. in five minutes? Yeah, the Badgers tweeted out it's on ESPN2, I believe, to start, and then they'll probably shift back to ESPN. Also, the line's jumping around on this game. Okay. It was sitting at four and a half, uh, minus four and a half for the Badgers, moved to five and a half. Now it's down to minus five. So it just keeps bouncing all over the place in the last hour, which is very interesting. Big money. It's a Chase Wolf effect, right? Like Chase Wolf. Effect, yeah. Chase, Chase Wolf's moving the needle. But both of these teams are missing like 12 key guys, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Probably more than that, no? Oklahoma State in particular is decimated. Yeah, interesting. Well, they don't have their yet. They don't, yeah, they're a disaster. And we, 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 first of all, we, we're figuring out what's going on with the coaching too. Like, Yeah. It's interesting to see where this these new bowl games are going to go to, right? Because you're you're missing out on a lot of the draft picks that are upcoming. That you, that might be a final showcase for a lot of these guys in prior years. But now it's so focused on health, which I totally get. I cannot fault any player if it's outside the college football playoff for just saying, "Hey, you know what? If I'm, I'm going to be a top draft pick." I totally get it. It almost creates a showcase now for young players to look ahead for next year, to basically show to the coaches, look, you want to look for a guy to replace him? Look no further than right here. So I'm excited to see who steps up. And with a new coach, even for Wisconsin now, even more reason to lay it all on the field and, and get totally. their notice. Totally. It's uh, it's going to be fun. Now, it seems like Luke Fickle, and he said this you know, in the weeks leading up, that, that's a direct quote from him. Um, he won't be calling any shots if there's a decision. And it was a really good question by I think Jesse Temple of the Athletic a few weeks back. Um, you know, to Luke Fickle of all right, it's it's fourth and two. Who's who's making the decision in the bowl game to go for it? He said that will probably not be my decision. So it seems like uh, Jim Leonard, uh, maybe not on offense, I guess in that sake, Bobby Ingram, but Jim Leonard will will still be kind of the, the head coach. It's just such an odd dynamic. It's only happened a handful of times in college football where a new coach comes in and, and still is coaching for, for this team in the bowl game. It's uh it's, it's a little strange. I'm excited to see what the dynamic is for, for Fick and his, uh, in his debut. It, it, it takes a certain kind of guys to be able to do this dance. Don't you think yeah. like yeah. Fick and Leonard, it's a, it's a testament there to their humility to both of them. 
Um, I don't know how it's going to look. Kyle, it looked like you were about to say something. I kind of cut you off. Yeah, it's with this especially. I just want to see how the players kind of react to this because we've talked about it when we were talking about whether Leonard's going to stay or how the players are going to react when they actually went a different direction other than Leonard. How are they going to react when there's kind of two alpha dogs? Like, I'd, I'd kill it'll be like a fly in the wall, you know? Like, who's going to be giving that pregame speech? Is Fickle just going to be, like, hanging out by the exit door, just, like, the like peeking his door, I mean, his head in? Or, like, is he going to be involved, like, trying to motivate the guys along with Jimmy? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's a fascinating dynamic, which is how – because you want to win the game. as And, obviously, Fickle, regardless of if he's really coaching or not, a lot of people are going to be looking at this like a reflection on what Luke Fickle's done in the short time he's been there. And honestly, Jim Leonard hasn't figured out what he's doing next year. That's going to be a big thing with Jimmy Leonard is he's got to show that he can still do this and he is potential if he wants to go for a head coaching gig eventually or Green Bay Packers or whoever the hell he might, he, what route he's going to decide to go. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what the power dynamic looks like. And I'm curious to see who the players kind of respond to. And if he's active on the sideline, I think it's going to be stuff we're going to see in that first quarter. All right, game is game is about to kick off on ESPN two. Go ahead, Brad. Oh, any bets on where Fickle is? Is he in the press box? Is he on the sideline? He'll be on the sideline. He'll be on the sideline. I feel okay. confident about that. Um, as I, I just flipped over my television to ESPN two. Mike Gundy's haircut. Oh is, my gosh, it's just unreal. It, it, is. it is the most unbelievable monstrosity I've ever seen. Mike Gundy. I mean, he's been at Oklahoma State for like a million years, hasn't he? He's been there for a minute. Yeah, for sure. He's got a big Oklahoma – that's an Oklahoma State haircut. Uh, there's there Luke is. Fickle there on the sidelines. On the sidelines. It, it's still weird to see him in a motion W. Can I, can I say that? It is. No, I'm with you on that, dude. I, I, it certainly is uh, a little uh, little odd. But Red Red looks good on him, I'll say. He's a he vest guy. Big vest guy. Yeah. Is uh, Would you rock a vest, Brad? Are you a vest guy? You know, I uh, I have been known to rock a vest here or there. Actually, Christmas Day, I wore a black vest with like a uh, – what's that? What was that kind of pattern? Like a plaid pattern. Same thing. A that, buffalo like, plaid? Buffalo plaid. I was wearing Buffalo that. plaid. It's it's yep. the sign of the season. Hunter Vaughn, get back in here. Show off your we buffalo need plaid. I need to see people. it. There's the Look at that. Plaid. That's what I was wearing. I was wearing that yeah. shirt with a black vest over it. Uh, so, I mean, maybe Luke Fickle saw a picture of your boy. And was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. If I would need to win over the Badger faithful, that's what I need to do. I like the red pants, by the way. Speaking of uniforms on uh, on our on our guys. Yeah, no kidding. All right, here we go. 11 minutes late, but the guaranteed rate bull kicking off right now on ESPN2. The Badgers kicking away. Oklahoma uh, State set to return as they do on the opening kickoff from the three-yard line. Um, this is going to be... Uh, good stop. Going to be yeah. a, a very interesting game where we don't know half the people on the field. Um, shout out to Stormy. I don't know who that is. Um, How do you pronounce that last name? <laughs> but, but <laughs> leave that yeah, leave that to Strofe. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. The sideline reporter on ESPN too. So we'll give you we'll give you some play by play. We'll react with you. Uh, we'll be joined by some guests throughout. It is a special edition of ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day across the ESPN Madison digital platforms. Um, if you want to leave us a comment, we can see them if you're on Facebook or YouTube. So feel free to shoot us a comment. Happy to feature those throughout. If you have a question for Brad Nortman, the Badgers legend, or if you just have a thought on the game, uh, and also let us know where you're checking in from. All right, so I have no expectations Ooh. of how this game's go. Big gain there on first down. Yeah, they're getting into space. Yeah, a quick 12-yard gain right off the bat. So, like, is the, I mean, only, this is a half-shell defense for the, for the Badgers, right? Half their starters aren't even playing in this one. Do we like – I to switch topics, do we yeah. like the jersey combo? Do we like the, the white on red? I love Oklahoma State's. Yeah, Oklahoma yeah. State's is sweet. I love I love their logo. There you go. That cowboy. Uh, I, I, like the white right there. I like the white on red. Yeah. That is a stout defensive front. It is indeed. It is indeed. Well, no Keanu Benton, though, tonight. So. Yeah. We will see, man. Or, or Nick Irving. Yeah. I'm sorry? Are those different red pants? They look a little dark. I, know, I, I imagine they're the same. You think they're breaking out a special <laughs> yeah. You think, yeah. you think they're breaking out a special for uni for the guaranteed rate bowl? No, just different pants. <laughs> These are the guaranteed rate bowl pants. There you go. Oh, there you go. That looks like an ex experience, inexperienced communication there. Can I also say, I didn't realize they were you playing. You can say whatever you want. I'm, that I'm going to. That <laughs> yeah. is my green yeah, light. I've had it. Yeah. 
I didn't realize they were going to be playing this game at Chase Field and not yeah, at Chase teams. Field. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a that's an interesting little wrinkle. It's it's going to take a bit of time for them to get used to that depth perception. What just happened? Did your feed just cut yeah. out? My yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're back. Point. We're back. All right. Just went to black. What the hell's going on? Brett. It's a guaranteed rate bowl. It's 930 on a Tuesday night. What Brett. is going on around Brett. here? Brett, how many times you play in a, uh, a ballpark? I never did. I never, never did. did. I've, you I've never only played. in a ballpark? Okay. Interesting. I never, well, okay. I take that back. I Okay. I did. I did. Uh, it's still early. I'm still getting oh, guys. It's been a month. It's been a month. Um, I you played at only Qual- attached this morning, Brad. Yeah, that's true. With my, with my, with you guys though, with my guys, um, I played at Qualcomm Stadium uh, when the Chargers were still there, oh. and it was, it was weird. It was weird. Um, you, you know, they did what they could to shrink it, but the, you know, one area, the sideline was massive, uh, like the sideline gap between. Wow, what a bomb of a punt. Oh, holy Wow. Reds, eyes lit up. Right now. Oh, man. That man. good return, though. Wow. How return. about that to start the game, guys? That was like a 70-yard Who is this move. punter, Brad? Can you put him on camera, please? Why is ESPN not putting the punter on camera? My man deserves a shot right there. That was unreal. 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 Brad, given the opportunity, would you do like a punting national showcase camp that you organize yourself? Yeah, I mean that's a huge task, but um, you get all the big time punters. I think if Brad you know calls, yeah. I would. I mean, I, I I would do that. I did some one on one coaching, which I really enjoyed. It was really cool to help shape and develop those those young high schoolers. I think a camp would be a lot of fun. Um, wow, that was a no commercial break right out there to Braylon Ch- Allen. Ch- Chase yeah, Wolf yeah, yeah. one for yeah. one, by the way. Chase Wolf yeah. perfect one for one. As, Can as I just say I, I love the fact that Chase Wolf is starting. I mean, my, my guy has been waiting in the wings this whole time. Totally. And, and a senior, let it rip. Hey, can we acknowledge his hometown they just put on the screen as well? Cincinnati, Ohio. And wow, he is from Cincinnati. Oh, or, or's, Luke Fickle, or's Luke Fickle from again? Is Well, well he's, he's not from originally yeah. Cincinnati, but obviously he came from the University of Cincinnati. Braylon gets a hole first down, Patchers. Let's okay, where, was the first two plays on a shotgun? Are we implementing a little bit of baby air raid tonight? Yeah, I would love to see it. Phil Longo, I don't think, is with the staff tonight. No. Okay. But maybe. Maybe Bob. Maybe Coach. Bobby's just like, hey, these are all the things I had in the back page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to use them. Why but not I'm, tonight? I'm yeah. fascinated what that turnover actually looks like. Does Phil Longo come in and have conversations with the players ahead of time? Or are they just waiting? Because they know the air raid's coming. Do they just hypothesize what it's going to look like? And then it comes in spring ball? Like, I, I imagine he, he's met with them. But I, I don't know that they're implementing it yet. Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, Braylon. Like, oh, oh, there you go. Braylon's oh, down in front. Into Cowboy territory up to the 40-yard line of Oklahoma State as Braylon Allen uses the left sideline. Oh boy, the offense looking sharp. It's Where has this been all year long? What could yeah. have been? Where is this Ben is right? Good wow. Gracious. The white on red is growing on me. Okay. Jersey update from Kyle Russo. You 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 warmed up to do some push-ups because I feel like you're getting some on this drive. So how does it work again? Remind me how we how so, we so let's just say Braylon Allen, although he just went to the sideline, busted off a 40-yard touchdown here, 35 yeah. yard rather. And they hit the uh, extra point. And they hit the extra point. You got to you got to crush seven push-ups. But then, it, it, let's say the next drive they score another touchdown. You got to crank out fourteen push-ups. Okay. So you are when you are doing the, touch, when opposing doesn't score, I don't do anything. No, no, no. It's just when the Badgers score. Got it. You're you're our personal Bucky Badger tonight. They're gonna score twenty-three points. They're gonna win twenty-three-seven, and I'm gonna do twenty-three push-ups, and I'll probably do like a total of like 60, 50, uh, however much it is. I've yeah. never been a math guy. Don't look at me. Brad, you're a math guy. You're good at number. It, it depends. It depends on how the points are are scored, right? I mean, what if it's a, it's could be a, you know, a safety field goal touchdown. I'd love it to see the number. Depends how it's all sliced up. Brad, what's your favorite uh, uh, way of scoring? We talk about this on Prep Mania all the time. Me and Dennis Semrau. What's what's your favorite way a, a, a team can score? Mine's mine's a defensive end scoop and score. Ooh, love a big man touchdown. That's good. That's specific. Um. I I think a kickoff return for a touchdown I is agree. very cool. I think whether it's to start the game or oh, even if it's not, I just think a kickoff return for a touchdown is absolutely electric. It goes the entire length of the field. I love something on special teams. I would not choose a punt return for a right. touchdown. Right. I, I knew that was there. 
That was the last, right? That's the yeah, base resistance. Very last. Shot. Chase Wolf, Aaron and oh, 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 it. Dropped oh, it. Dropped it. Ingram. Dropped it. That was on the money, though. Oh, man. Terrific. Oh, God. I thought he had it. You got to catch that. All right. Fourth and four. We're, we're, they're not in field goal range, are they? At the 35. It's a 52 yarder. Consider me unprepared. Is Marcus Allen playing today? <laughs> I uh, <laughs> great question. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Okay. What, what do you I think that re-entry was like? Hey, I'm back. I'm Just back. An air raid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're talking about a 47 oh, wow. yard attempt. It is up. It is a bomb. Three push-ups for Kyle and Russo. Okay, so right I do there. now or? Add your score. Crank out three of them right now. Let's party. Okay, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Should I put this on the ground so you guys can join me? I, I, I'm going to let you take creative freedom here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> best. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Oh, oh, what okay. of you? Get the ottoman out of the way. All the way down to the ground. One. one. Two. Two. Ready. Badgers lead three to zero over Oklahoma State. The guarantee. Right if they below. win, like thirty-eight <laughs> zero. <laughs> Colin, I gotta say too, that's good push-up form. Oh, you keep I've your elbows in tight. You, I'm a push-up guy. Are you a push-up guy? I'm a push-up guy. What does that mean? Does that mean oh. you 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 frequently crank out push-ups? My my version. I don't have any like home gym or anything. So there's nothing like I don't even have dumbbells or anything. So I did push-ups during COVID. All that's all I did. Like huh? push push-ups. I did like I I might peak. I'm out of my prime. I might peak. I would do like a couple hundred a day. Wow. Or a couple hundred a couple days a week at least. And uh like probably this, is, this humble bragginess going on right now. No, but like I'm, I'm out of my prime. I don't do push-ups like that anymore. So I don't think I'm going to have that. But I used to be really good at it. So I, I made sure the form is good for elbows. Yeah. And everything. It, it maximizes the pec, right? Because a lot of people put their, their elbows out, right? And they it's hurt their shoulders. shoulders. Yeah, weak. and they hurt their shoulders. because That's weak sauce. Good. Can't have it. Won't have it. Weak Back. sauce. Badgers uh, take the early lead. 3-0 to zero over Oklahoma State. So anticipated. Guaranteed right ball, which kicked off 11 minutes later than it was scheduled to. This is, this is already past my bedtime. It is 9.35 p.m. This game this was supposed to kick off 20 minutes ago. Not your bedtime. It's, yeah, you're right. We have got a few hours. <laughs> but, uh, I, a game currently, by the way, on ESPN2. We'll be on ESPN at some point, so we're going to have to flip channels again. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Badgers take the lead thanks to Braylon Allen and Chase Wolf. Rejuvenating the offense, Colin Russo. Strove, what would you say your average bedtime is including work days including off days let's say a normal week let's say middle of october what is your uh what what is your average bedtime i'm curious <laughs> why middle of october do you think it changes by the month i definitely do think it changes by the month uh, i don't personally but you don't think the sports matters no i'm up i'm up later than that always right there's no sports on at 2 a.m i would say my average bedtime is probably about 1 30 a.m oh Oh. That is Brad, what about you? As thirty mid thirties, what do you think? Me? Hey, don't give him mid thirties. He's still low thirties. And we're we're mid averaging early. weekend and weekday. Correct. Oh, no later than ten o'clock. No, come on, I'm not that lame. I would say ten forty-five. Um, yeah, I mean, I would. I would ten thirty sounds right. I, oh, I'm not that lame. Like I go a half an hour longer than than what you. What do. about all right? Yeah, so but, let's say just off days. So you're not working the next day, like weekends. What what does it look like? Uh, I mean, it depends what the weekend looks like. Uh, I would say between 11 and midnight then. Okay. Um, I mean, if I'm doing something that's going to make it, you know, going out or going to a game or movie concert, it'll be much later. But it was just like, even if it's just like a night at home um, and there's nothing to do tomorrow, no alarm needing to be set between 11 and midnight. And it's, right. and it's, and guy, it's, guys, guy it's, it's earlier. It's pushing I, earlier. He's, he's saying he's inferring. <laughs> he's getting there old. he is. There he is. Nick, good to see you. Why is, leader. why is high V on the headset? You guys notice that? The high V branding, like the grocery store, was on his headset. <laughs> what the hell's up with that? Is that hey a man, he's trying to get, his, he's he's trying to get NIL too. Yeah. It's good kickoff coverage. Yeah, wow. Look at that, Brad. Special team's playing pretty good to start. I think good kickoff coverage too is a great momentum builder as well. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Do you disagree, Strove? Well, I'll say that <laughs> sentence again. I think good kickoff coverage is great for momentum. 
Yeah, I'll give that to you, I guess. What? When you when when there's like oh good but then the first guy who actually gets there it's is just, able to bring him down. I'm, That's so, awesome. I'm, I'm so distracted by Mike Gundy's haircut A. <laughs> and B how he has Phillips 66, which if I'm not mistaken is an oil. It's so on brand for Oklahoma, right? So what the it hell is oil? Why why does Luke high V on his headset? Mike Gundy has Phillips 66 oil on his headset. And we are playing in the guaranteed rate <laughs> bowl at 10 o'clock at night on a Tuesday. I, I, I feel like I'm in a fever dream, man. <laughs> that I just feels real to me. I asked you about the kickoff coverage momentum, and you respond with breaking down the grocery <laughs> store and oil sponsorship for both the head coaches. Fascinating where this night's going to go, fellas. We're still in the yeah. same Yeah, I'm already loopy. Oh. Oh, here we oh, what coverage right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we Am I ahead? Have, no, you're, you're right no, no, you're on. Oh, Alexander good. Smith, big tackle. Actually, they had plenty of time with that fumbled snap to go. Alexander Smith. Okay. Did, did, has he announced whether he could come back? Is he coming back? I, I believe he so. is. Yeah, I believe he is. Wow. Yeah, he is coming back. He's like, he's, yeah. That's like fifth, sixth year maybe. There he is. Jimmy. Jimmy Leonard. It has got to have been a weird month for that coaching staff. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's got to be so uncomfortable. Screen, screen, right? screen. Like another screen. They're, they're not hey. comfortable with this quarterback. No, fourth down. Good, good, good stop again by the Badgers. D. We're only five. Yeah, there's away. Hunter. There of he is. Of course, Hunter Waller was in the right place at the right time. Always is. He is. I'm so, I'm so jacked to see what he's going to do next year. Yeah. Under under Fick. Gotta keep, uh, you, gotta, you gotta stay healthy. Yeah, you, the, the defense gotta stay healthy. Yeah, that's the biggest we're thing. We're only six minutes into this one, and we've come to the conclusion of two Oklahoma State drives. <laughs> this is my hey, look at him. Look at him. He's Ooh. he's in, he's, got a, he's got a paper in his hand. He's in Ooh. Brad oh, punt. see another big old punt. Oh my god. Yeah. Ah, not so nah, much. Not, not as high. That was a sky punt, no? Hung it up there, trying to hit the rafters. Yeah. Yeah. Does, I, uh, I mean, does that I mean, stadium have a roof? I think yes. it does. And and for the opposite reason. It's of, in Arizona. Uh, it de- yeah, it has a roof. Yeah, like it's just too dark. Is there a lot of rain in Arizona? No. In, I think it's, I, it's the heat. It's in the desert. It's that's the what I'm heat. saying. It's too hot. No, that's my point, Hunter. I, I, why they do that? They do that in Miami as well? So why is there a roof? Be- air conditioning. Because it's, because it's the too desert. Hot. The heat. Oh, Close it up, air conditioning. It, they, they're going to get cooked in How there. How did yeah. you get a degree? I just, <laughs> four years, by the way. Got a, got, got a degree in four years, by the way. It was a, it was a true miracle a couple years back. Shout out to you. Paid off this. Oh, oh, oh. That guy right read it the whole way. That's a very good play. Oh, no. Loss of what here? I love those Oklahoma State helmets. Yeah, that, no, that's, that's a cool. clean uniform. That is a that is a grade A good uniform. Yeah, and they Oklahoma got the matte State black oh, with the yeah. stripe. Mm. So is this game going to be on ESPN two all night, or are we going to have to flip? Oh, probably till that uh, East Carolina post game closes up. Well, I'm worried about that. What if they don't? Because t- we don't have the volume on, so we're not going to hear them tell us to flip the channel. We're just going to be watching, you know, the greatest UFC knockouts of all time on ESPN two. <laughs> I, I think that's going to be our cue to check one yeah. channel up and see what and when it's on ESPN. Second None. and sixteen. Oh, here great, we go. See you great later. Great see you run. later, Chaz. See you later. Save myself some push ups. <laughs> two lace. I'm tackle. rooting against points already. Like, <laughs> oh, Colin's gonna love the kickers. Wow. Oh, that man. Well. man when, you see a, when you see a pulling guard hit, hit one guy and then go on to another to open up the hole, that's a beautiful thing. That is Wisconsin football right there. Sure is. I just want to see like a big run like that break down the sideline of Wisconsin sideline. I just want to see Luke Fickle just running with him full speed, following <laughs> him down in excitement. That's what I want to see. That would be the old. That would yeah. he would need to coach the snap in this game. That's what I need to see. Do you think that's you think that's coach a coach Fick kind of deal that he would be the guy that runs along the sideline? I did that yeah. when I coached flag football, and it that was, doesn't it, surprise me at all. It was good for momentum. And I think Fickle should do the same. Tell us more about coaching flag football, please. <laughs> I need to know every detail about this. I uh, I did a uh, couple different younger kids. How old were you? High school. How okay. old were they? Uh, it varied. Uh, the youngest I coached was third grade. It was a nightmare. And uh, I went up to like <laughs> really? sixth grade and that they were pretty competent, at least with the ball in their hands. But uh, there was usually one or two athletes, kids who played soccer or, like, had free weekends or whatever. 
the kids who are the the kid move with some cleats on. Those Chase cleats. Wolf airing it out. Airing it out. Oh, oh, he threw no. an interception. Oh, he oh threw he's an bringing his back. Oh no, Chase Wolf. Oh wow. Oh, airing it out. Airing it out. You Too know who needs to be coaching? Touch. Too soft. Chase Wolf needs Colin Russo coaching him right now. I am telling you, Ch- Ch- it what would have ran down the side. He would have made. He would have gotten the touchdown if he had Coach Fickle racing him. It would have pulled the adrenaline out. It would have been great. I don't know, but I would always beat them because I was older than the kids I was coaching. So I would just race them, and it oh, it'd be a blast, and it would give me some adrenaline. Oh, it'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, so the Badgers throw an interception. They uh, in the Oklahoma State end zone returned pretty well so Oklahoma State will now have their third drive in like seven minutes of the guaranteed rate bowl Badgers lead 3-0 it's a special edition of ESPN Wisconsin College game damn Alex Strofe Badgers legend Brad Nortman the great Colin Russo our honorary Bucky Badger tonight doing push-ups for every Bucky point uh but it might be a little oh here we go the, the MMA awards no it's a, it's a commercial never mind just a commercial it it's looks like commercial. it though doesn't it that's a fake what M- or do you think there's MMA awards tonight is that is this the night for MMA awards no it, it? I, no it actually was on prior because I checked ESPN2 at some point what does it say on the screen here continue coverage on ESPN so flip back the ESPN oh it does say fighters only world MMA awards look, why is that a thing don't ask me don't ask me. That is bizarre. Who getting a what? Most violent? Like they're, they're all violent. Probably what? Like best knockout? Yeah, best knockout. Softest chin. How about that one? That's one. a disaster. Who would want to do that? Then the guy gets upset. They start fighting each other because they're all right near each other. These guys it'd be hate great, each other. It'd be great TV. Sure. I guess. What about the red carpet? I'm sure that's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have some more security than fighters. It's- They're walking in with like their robes, their fighting yeah, robes, their way- stuff behind them on the red carpet. It's like a way in. It's brutal. That's remarkable. Wow. wow. The actual fighter MMA awards. Who MCs that? They get like actual talents to do that? Can't be Bruce, right? Bruce is probably too expensive. Bruce Buffer? Oh, he's way too expensive. Jo- Joe, Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan's expensive. probably too ex- Joe Rogan's probably too expensive. Absolutely. I'm sure he has a deal with the UFC. I don't think that's a UFC sponsored event. So what is that? It just said like the world MMA champion. What is there that's MMA relevant other than the UFC? Anything? Fighters only MMA. There's awards. like, no, there's those uh, kickboxing leagues and whatever. I don't Isn't know. Isn't like Bellator or something like that? There's other. Bellator doesn't exist. Stuff. That's a good point. That's a good point. Guys, yeah. this is the 14th annual award for it too. They've been doing this for some time. Yeah, yeah I, are you guys done watching football? Then we're just watching the, the yeah, Bellator yeah. MMA I, I awards. We probably get something out of breaking down this uh, this uh, World Championship World MMA award ceremony. Man, How long do you think it is? You think it's two hours? You think it's three hours? Yeah, it's yeah, two years? hours. I yeah. think it's two. Do they have somebody? Um, well, they're stretching it to three. Come on. Well, what are they doing? To fill that? Yeah, that's a fair question, Colin. Do right? They, like, is is Ariana is Grande cool? coming out and singing a Christmas tune? I don't think they'd be <laughs> able to afford Ariana, but would they get like a mid-level, C-list type of performer? Ariana cover like, washed up, you know. An Ariana cover band, they could probably get something like that. I, I listened to a lot of Ariana over the weekend. Who who was the probably like you guys all listen to Christmas tunes at some point this weekend? I would assume, eh? unfortunately oh, yeah. yeah yeah so who was the artist that popped up the most for you guys because it was it was ariana grande for me she, she just kept coming on she must have three christmas albums that's a good question you know i i have i did sirius xm radio primarily and you can okay. choose what kind of uh, music you want so i was a channel um, 71 holidays you watching the game <laughs> oh yeah. uh-oh 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 See you later, Oklahoma State, the 50, the 40, the 30, 20, the 10. Goodbye. Wow. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Unbelievable. Forgot I was going to the head. I didn't want to cut Brad off there, but I was a couple no, seconds. No, that was worth cutting me off for. Stephon Johnson Jr. breaks a tackle up the sideline, goes 84 yards. They, We touchdown. know they're throwing a quick screen. Which is <laughs> Poor tackling. Look they at that. They haven't done anything like, since. Like six missed tackles. Yeah, they haven't done history. anything since. How how does that happen? All right. Well, this has become an interesting ball game off of an 84 yard Oklahoma State score. Uh make that six to three. It will be seven to three following the point after, assuming he makes it with 556 remaining in the first quarter. 
Uh, we're with you throughout tonight here on ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day, even through the rough moments like this. But again, as the extra point attempt, good, 7-3 Oklahoma State. Do we care about the result of this game, Brad Norman? Oh, yeah. If, if you call yourself a Wisconsin fan, you want to you want to you want to win. Right. Wanna... But, but but are you more upset if the Jacksonville Jaguars lose on Sunday or if Wisconsin loses tonight? Which one makes me more upset? Wow. Well, okay, I, well, well, Sunday doesn't matter. Sunday doesn't matter. Sunday doesn't matter. <laughs> Next Sunday matters. All right. Let me rephrase the question. Are you more upset if the Jacksonville Jaguars lose next Sunday or if the Badgers lose tonight? That's a pretty tough question. I My top allegiance, though, is to the Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Badgers. So I would rather see Wisconsin win tonight, look good, send the Luke Fickle era with a resounding win, have an over 500 record, sorry, Colin, then see the Jags make the playoffs. She's where my heart is. I Don't get me wrong. That's no slight to the Jags. That's just a reflection of how much I love my Wisconsin. Bank. I think we may have just lost Colin, but I have an idea to get it back. Uh, <laughs> Hunter Vaughn and I were chatting a little bit. We decided that uh, there's one segment we do every ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day pregame show that we get our competitive fire rolling. We try to beat Hunter. You know what I'm talking about? It's time to play the Pella window into the opponent. As Hunter Vaughn has written five trivia questions regarding Oklahoma State. We'll keep this rolling throughout the night. So maybe we'll just do one question here. But um, we've got five questions. We're going to try to beat Hunter Vaughn. Let's do, yeah, I like that. Let's do one okay, question. Let's just do one at a time. Yeah. So we can go to this throughout the night. So let's do question one. Okay. Uh, so, the hello window into the opponent. Question one What school pays Oklahoma State for the use of their Pistol Pete mascot? Ooh. Is it A, Wyoming, B, the Division Three powerhouse that is Hardin Simmons, uh, or C, New Mexico State? New Mexico State's the Aggies. Aggies. Right? Yeah. I think Wyoming. Wyoming's also the Cowboys. I think he's trying to throw us off with that. But yeah, that's they, the Wyoming has got like that that's fucking cowboy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the horse. It's got to, it's got to be the, the middle one. Are we talking about like the the name itself or the mascot? Like the an mascot exact replica? design. Yeah, Hartman Simmons doesn't have any money to give Oklahoma State. Fair point. Our guy Brett trying to help us out here. This is the beauty of the live stream. Yeah, we have we have phone a friend. Brett, Brett thinks it's Hardin Simmons. I would did probably I, say did, that's did right. I say that correctly? You did. Colin, you like to dive into the philosophy of Hunter when he writes those questions. He loves Division Three football. He loves it. We 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 he made but he knows that division. he knows that we know he loves it. Or do I know that you know that I know <laughs> that I love it? <laughs> Good point. Hunter knows that we're going to think like this. We've done this too many times. But he also knows that, like, you hear Hartman Simmons, you hear Hunt, you think that's that's his one. But also, I think Wyoming and, yeah, I mean, we already know the answer, so it's got to be B. Yeah, you know? it's be All right, B. Hunter, read the question one more time. What school pays Oklahoma State for the use of their Pistol Pete mascot? Yeah, I like it. Let's roll with it. Hardin Simmons, final answer of trivia question number one of the Pella window into the – Nope. It's got to be option C, New Mexico State, then. It is New Mexico State. Oh. They oh, pay them $10 return. a year. Was that, was that a kick return for Chim Ray there? That was. That was a big return. Chim yeah. Ray Deacon. You almost had that kickoff return for a touchdown. Oh, baby. Your favorite I'm type of score. That. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so we will revisit the Pella window of the opponent throughout the game tonight. Hunter, thank you for question one. Uh, we've got four more where that came from. But we got to talk about Chim Wright DK what returning a, kicks. Like I said, this is a fever dream. Why is Chim Wright DK returning kicks? What a great that? middle return scheme that we had right there. Did you see that? You let everyone else run yeah. by the middle. You open up. Man, that was beautiful. Chim Wright, he, he saw the hole, and he actually, like, elbowed his own guy out of the way. <laughs> Love to see it. Hey, Brad. is Luke 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 Brad on this. Breaking down special teams. Yeah, Brad, has Luke Fickle settled his special team staff yet? I don't think so. Have you received a phone call? Yes or no? No phone call. No phone call. I'm waiting. I'm here. You're, you're going to hear him out? That's crap. I'd listen. All right. So Braylon Allen just got plowed forward for 10 yards. That's a, that's a, he always that's falls a forward, run. but there is he, a flag. He, he on looks it. healthy. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's probably rested up, right? Okay. <clears throat> that's one thing I'll be People eager. Back. I'll be eager to see how the new offense features our running backs. 
I, I would guess, as much as we want Braylon Allen to be the man and tote the rock 30 times a game, how many times are we going to need to see it where he runs out of steam at the end of the year? Maybe it's better we give him 20 carries, get him more in open space than it is the tight confines of our old old style offense. Yeah. And maybe he's running fresh all year. Hopefully. That's the idea. That's kind of been like clearly what he wants. Because it's been yeah. two years and it's been like that. So another pistol. Here we go. Mm, muddied up. Muddied up indeed. So make it second and 15 now for the Badgers. 5-12 and counting to play. It's- in the first quarter, the guaranteed rate pull, 7-3 Oklahoma State in front. Go ahead, Russo. Is Tittman playing in this game? He's not, right? He is not. He 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 declared and will not play. Okay. Interesting. We have quite a bit. So far on the five guys we've had all year is uh is starting on offensive line, right? That would be correct. Well, I mean, the, the offensive line varied quite a bit this season, That's but yes, true. four of the regulars. Or I think it was yeah. actually three at of the regulars. How the year ended, at least. Well, no, is um I'm blanking on the name now. Guy that uh, entered the portal and then came back. That's not Marcus Allen, the offensive lineman. Oh. I'm blanking on the name. Me too. Um, Was it Lewis, the wide receiver? No, no, no. The, the offensive lineman that entered the portal oh. and, and came back. Wasn't it the guy who was dismissed from the team? No, no, no. no. Not, not Logan Brown. Um, oh. Somebody in the comments will help me out. Again, the beauty of the live stream. They'll get me right away. Thank you. Michael Furtney. Brett yes. Claire, Help it out. Me is who I was thinking of. Now we asked this question earlier with Marcus Allen, but Michael Furtney started quite a bit of games on the right side of the line this year. I don't think he's out there, but shouldn't he be? I don't know how I. T- the transfer portal confuses the heck out of me, man. Yeah. Oh, that's a bad ball. Third and fifteen. You throw a swing. Hey, shout out to Stoughton's finest, the Brady Shipper on the reception. First time we've seen wow. him all year. He's a Stoughton. Sponsored athlete? No, he is a Stoughton High School alum. Stoughton, the the sub the uh you know in, in the greater uh, Madison Metroplex area. Got it. <laughs> we got to get Colin out to some prep manias. Yeah, no summer. kidding. We can learn the Madison well, Metro. I'm not great with Wisconsin towns. I'm it's, learning. It's 15 minutes outside of Madison. I don't drive for – I don't have a car. I don't like just I, – I, let me go see what oh. it looks like. What a punt, Brad Norton. Would you love what to a see? Punt. That's a nine iron right there, boys. Put the nose down. <laughs> gave her gave her all she's got. Luke Fickle needs Hold to call this man. <laughs> Go like you're not impressed. The nine iron reference. That was terrific. We've seen some good punting tonight so far, guys. That's what everyone's tuning in for, right? That's what – do you actually tune into games to watch specific punters? Like, is there – uh, I'll just use McAfee as an example because everybody knows who he is, right? Like he was an electric punter, had a lot of personality when um, w- when he was at uh, Indi- with Indianapolis, obviously. Like would you tune in to watch Marquette King when he was with the Raiders, right? Like electric punters. Would you tune into games just to watch the punting? Whoever Brad Norman was playing for, right? The, the Jags well, I, for- I, I don't know that you can watch yourself. but Well, I'm talking about the, the electric. I think electric, people are trying uh, to tune in that 2017 team. Yeah. Um, no, the answer is no. I – as much as I talk a big game about loving to watch punting, I do love watching punting, but I, would, I wouldn't I would tune in. If it was an absolute trash I, I – I would watch almost any football game, we'll put it that way. But if it's an absolute trash game, um, but there's really good punters, uh, and there's something better on. <laughs> Brad, did you see that Rams-Broncos Christmas Day game? Riley Dixon, I believe who it was, didn't have to punt all game long. Imagine that. Going out there on Christmas and not having to actually punt at all if you're the Rams punter there. Bacon that would be wild. Best. That's so rare in the NFL too, right? I mean, defenses are so good. You're going to you're gonna find yourself punting even against the worst of teams. That's very rare. I'd love to know how many times that actually happens. Mm-hmm. No no more than once a year, I would say, Bacon across the whole league. league. So yeah. while I was researching for – Third down, stop. Third down, stop. Nice. Sorry. Go ahead, Hunter. Um, no, while I was researching for this, the trivia questions, I learned something about the Bedlam rivalry with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Yeah. And their first ever matchup, the wind was so strong in the game that there was a punt that went backwards, fell onto a frozen over river, and the teams actually had a scrum on the ice of the river to try and get the ball because it would have either been a safety or a touchdown. So we're talking before there's a stadium, right? Like they're just playing in the local park. Like they're at James yes. Madison Park. 
and it's like landing on Lake Monona. Yep. And they had a scrum on the ice. I guess that would be Mendota, rather, but you get my point. Brad, that was another yeah. rock solid punt. I was blown away and I knew I had to tell Brad. How many punts, how many punts are we getting tonight? If we're lucky, 20. If we're lucky. <laughs> We're lucky. If, if these guys are punting the ball this way and putting on a showcase. Brad, I love I you. I love, I, I love your insight. I love what, you know, I love that you, you'd had a great career in the national football league. Um, but I don't give a damn about punt. <laughs> is that, is that going to be a gripe between us now? No, I won't hold it against you. Relationship at all. Okay. Not everyone can appreciate the beauty that is punting. It's, you know, it's one yeah, or the other. That's, that's what they say. But even even I, as a punter, would not like to see that many. Well, are they not they comfortable enjoy. with this center and wolf under center at all? Like, uh, it is weird. Not, I don't know. They must they've not. Been out, they, they've been running it out of the gun every play. They, they must not feel comfortable with him like that. Unless this is their way of getting guys used to a more spread offense. Chase so wolf. Go pistol. Yeah, but it's – I mean, these O-linemen are going to be back. You're going to have guys back. It changes the way that routes get run. Mm. You think You're this right is a good game for, for transfer recruiting? No. Uh, no. Reminder, Colin, this is the guaranteed rate bowl played at 10 o'clock Eastern, 10.30 Eastern on a Tuesday night after Christmas. Did you guys see we got that 2024 quarterback out of Texas? You see like his hairdo. You see so, what he looks like? Sunshine. Mabry Mallory or whatever. Texas, dual threat. He's like the 28th ranked quarterback in that class, so high. Looks like Trevor Lawrence, 6'6". Yeah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> That's what? a little inside, little inside joke. Uh, anytime anything good Badgers related happens. Colin Russo, as the Badgers cannot convert on third down. Uh, this is going to be an ugly game. Yeah. Uh, Colin will send whatever said news is to our group chat of the four of us plus Adam Ertz, who we'll hear from at halftime of tonight's game. Um, and we'll just send hello with several question marks. And we found <laughs> and out. And exclamation during, points. Yeah, right. And exclamation points. And we found out during uh, you know our, our pre-show meeting tonight that the actual enunciation of said hello is. Hello? 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 <laughs> Big punt! Big punt! Big Let's punt, go! <laughs> Big punt! Look at that ball. Offensive weapon. Brad Norman! We got a fake punt! I mean, can we just take this in for a minute? That is so perfect of a sell. Give that man the ball. Playmaker. Offensive Andy Budovich, the most jacked punter in college football. He is huge. Doing his Brad Norman impression, faking a punt for a first down. Shout out Columbus. Shout out the Cardinals, state champions this year. Unbelievable. Yes. How lucky are we that we just got to witness that? Yes. A Wisconsin punter toting the rock. The oh tradition is alive. It's alive. I, I am so amped up. <laughs> Fake punt for the conversion. Brad Nortman's reaction is captured. That's the beauty of this live stream. It's ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day. I'm Alex Strope. That's Colin Russo, who is just fired up as ever to be up at, at uh, 11 o'clock now Eastern time out in That is awesome. <laughs> that is what Kirk Herbstreet wants to find as the offensive weapon because of his multiple successful fake punt attempts during his time as a Wisconsin Badger. I am so fired up about that. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. My adrenaline is pumping so hard <laughs> after watching that. I mean, we still got it, guys. We're still calling fake punts. If we needed a sign that we are going to return to glory, that was it. That was Unreal. what we needed to see. Real. Unreal. I, wow. I mean, well, Brad Nortman, you did retire officially from the NFL this morning. I did. Do you I think did. that was done in honor of your retirement? You know, some might say it's one of those great mysteries, right? I mean, it just can't be coincidence. I would like to think the team is tuning in to Wildey and Tausch yep. on a regular basis. Right. And when I guest hosted today with Jason Wildey, 
it, it came up and to give the the audience a little bit of backstory jj watt we were on air when jj watt announced his retirement today from the nfl and the conversation evolved into brad how was your retirement how did that all go and i said guys i never even had a retirement basically just phased out into the distance and we used this opportunity to held a uh, impromptu retirement press conference and it was uh it was everything you thought it would be i tried to do my best to thank those who helped get me there and have some uh, have some fun along the way, but that was uh, that had to have been a nod toward the career of Brad Norman. Had, had to have been. been. As, no other explanation. No. As Gibbs from the hit television show NCIS, it's coincidences. Yes. How's that for your obscure reference yes. of the night? Love it, Brad. I'm happy you put a close to your stellar career. Logan Cook, God forbid, let's say tweak something, whatever. Jags called, need you for the last two weeks. You don't, you don't, you don't pick up. Oh, of course I pick up. I even ended the press conference. I said like my spiel, and uh, I said thank you. I said the end? Question mark. Oh, oh. who doesn't love a good cliffhanger? That's like an M Night Shyamalan movie, right yeah, there. Yeah, no doubt. Right? Where it's just like, wait, what did we just listen to? Crack what does this ending it. mean? Absolutely. Leaves the door. Like cracked open. Like you oh, hold on. Time out. Kyle and Russo, are you being yelled at currently? No, I thought I heard walking upstairs. I'm, I think I'm okay because uh, uh, nobody should be walking around and above me right hey, now. If if Mad Dog Russo makes I don't an think appearance he is. I I hope he does. <laughs> can, can Mrs. Russo make an appearance tonight? I I she would yell at me, and I don't think she wants that. All right, I, I want I want I want a, get, I want a Colin get, Russo family member. I would, get, I would I, get a one or two until I get an in person confrontation. Okay, <laughs> well the thing is, Colin, I want a uh, Russo parental drop in tonight. Mm. Uh, it doesn't even need to be parental. Are either of your siblings in the house? Uh, my older brothers at UConn, so no. But my older sister is here. I I don't think no. She's an Notre Dame fan. We we could break down that if we want to. Shout and out to Pine. Yeah, uh, and my little brother is uh, a senior in high school, so maybe he can stop by. Love it. Love to hear it. Uh-huh. Uh, so we are uh, we are rocking with you. We've we've passed the hour threshold here. Take a shot. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, oh! He dropped it. He dropped it. Oh man! Chase Wolf throwing bombs. Oh no. On, uh, was oh, that second no, down or yeah. third down? With the exception of that interception, he's been putting it on the freaking money. Oh, bro. Oh, no. Keontes Lewis can't reel it in. As that was a touchdown. It just oh, went through his Brad. fingertips. Brad, that's brutal. Brad, that's brutal. <laughs> Feel it, too. I, I don't like Colin Russo whispering sweet nothings to you, Brad. <laughs> it, it makes me incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to tell him to stop, though. <laughs> <We're not. laughs> Please do. We're getting weird tonight, apparently. We are getting weird tonight. Oh, uh, third it's, 11, down. it's 11-10 here. I'm good. <laughs> hey, Julius Davis sighting, by the way, there on third down. Brings up fourth down again for the Badgers. Could we see another fake putt? That would be so unexpected. It just It's like so crazy. It just might work. Is that an accurate statement? It said first game as Wisconsin head coach. He's not, it's not really his first game as Wisconsin head coach. It is absolutely his first game as the Wisconsin head coach. I mean, I mean like Jimmy Leonard's still there. It's like, your head coachish on the sideline. Yeah, I haven't seen enough Jimmy Leonard tonight. Where the hell is he? Uh, they showed him a few times. He's down there. He's coaching the defense. Yeah, I'm seeing more of Fickle, which I understand. But Well, Fickle. Look, nothing against Jim Leonard. Luke Fickle's more handsome. Brad, is this going to land? Yes. Oh, Great punt within the 10 again. Wow. Yes. Can we give this guy the MVP if we win? Another nine iron. Another one. He he's got a whole bag full of tricks. He is huge. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's ginormous. He's absolutely ripped. Do you know Vunovic at all, Brad? Um, I've just introduced myself to him once and uh really nice guy. It was before a game, so it was after he warmed up and just said, Hey, I'm an old washed up. Brad, punter. you ever thought about bulking up and being one of those jack punters? Have you ever you thought know, about bulking up? Yeah, what are you saying? No, no. I'm not – uh, no, no, you're an athlete, but like, like you know, like there's like, those giant hulking punters, you know what I mean? Or there's big pit kickers, Joey Sly, you know what I mean? You know, I'll, I'll say this. It's not for a lack of trying. I don't know what it is. My body frame cannot put on mass like that. 
I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. All guys, so there's also yeah, that. It's hard to I'm fill just out a frame. lanky, you know. Yeah, it's hard to fill out a lanky or frame like that. Yeah, I wasn't throwing at this. I was just saying, you know, there's hunters that are like, eh, like big hulking figures. I don't know. It sounded yeah. like a bit of a diss. It sounded no, like no, a I bit of a like, diss. Brad, no, Brad's. A, he's got an athletic build. That's his build, and it, and it worked. And it obviously successful NFL career. I don't think anybody's complaining. I think Brad would take that build again if he. If it, if it meant the career he had, but I'll yeah. also say that um, I did for an off season, just try to really get after it and awesome diet and extra time in the weight room, all that kind of stuff. I felt like there were extra gains to be had. I still didn't get to where I wanted to go. And Holy cow, that lifestyle is just like, not for me. I, I, I just, I like, I like some knows, treats yeah. here and there and yeah. cold beer every once in a while. Fair. You cut out everything if you're on those strict diets that they you, give you. you. Do. It's total lifestyle commitment. Huh. Yeah. Second and 11. Let's see. Throwing a shot. Oh, he, oh, he slipped. Ooh, that was slipped. a horrible pass. The field, the field looks a little bit, a little slick, doesn't it out there? Yeah, it, it does. does. But, uh, you guys told me it never rains in Arizona, so that can't be the case, right? No, no condensation there. Well, they did move it in, so this is over the top of the normal field. So they were probably watering it. Watering Water. turf? Who well, waters it's turf? Grass. Right? You still the grass still needs to grow with water. They're not playing on grass though. They're playing on turf. No, I think it's grass. Are you sure they're playing on turf? Oh! oh man, dropped the potential interception. Did uh the interception god. I thought I thought we were going to have him some push-ups for Colin if, Russo. If Torchio caught that and returned it for a touchdown, I don't think he comes back next year because he <laughs> dropped that. I think he's going to come back next year. You think he? Do you actually think he went into the game undecided? Yes. Real question. No. Really? I, I think part of him said, "If I have the game of my life, I'm going to end it off." No chance. All right, another punt back. incoming. We have twelve fifty-five remaining in the second quarter. This is like this guy's fourth. Punt. I think this is yeah. Logan, I think this is the seventh punt of the game. Not Logan Ward has punt. got a glove on his left hand, and he's hammering punts. Mm. Good punt again as Dean Ingram makes the fair catch. Badgers take over with twelve forty-seven left in the second quarter. It's seven to three in the guaranteed right bowl. Oklahoma State leading Wisconsin. It is a very special edition, the live stream edition, the watch party edition of ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day. Hi, in the bottom right corner of Alex Stroop. Next to me on the bottom here is our producer in the Park Bank ESPN Madison Studios. Hello. The great Hunter Vaughn above me. The, I tweeted this. I don't know if it makes sense, but the greatest fake punter in Wisconsin history? Don't think that makes sense. Brad Nortman's with us, of course, as well as Kyle Russo with us an hour ahead over in Connecticut. Uh, the great UW student. The great Colin Russo with us as well on his Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. He's laughing because he's not a great student, but he's pretty I'm darn good at pretty good, good at entertainment, though. Good, good student. Did pretty well on my finals. No complaints. <laughs> uh, Sadler chimes in with a question on YouTube, asking Brad, "Have you ever made a tackle essentially during your your punt return, or when you punted the ball? Have you ever got the return?" Great question. Uh, I do. I how about this for an answer? I do have. Um, tackles to my name in the NFL. Wow. Okay. Okay. You know how they do tackles, right? So yeah. if, if someone runs out of bounds, they give the tackle to the nearest defensive player. So there's been like three times where the guy runs out of bounds, maybe because he doesn't want to take a hit from, you know, your boy. But uh, he Fair. runs out of bounds. I'm like nearest in the area. Tackle for Brad Norman. There's been a couple times where I've actually gotten my nose in there. And it was kind of one of those ones where, you know, they return it for maybe 10, 15 yards. I get a little bit more pep in my step on the return. Oh, boy. And I get in there. And I got to be honest, I'm not I'm not drilling a square hit on anybody. He kind of gets, you know, he gets off balance. Maybe someone's holding his, his leg, his ankle. And I come in, I get my nose in there. That, that's happened once or twice. Those are the young days. The, the veteran Brad wouldn't do that quite as much. But the young days playing for the Panthers – uh, there was still a little bit of, a little bit of hitting hunger, so to speak, and so I, I probably have. I would guess, I know I've, I have at least three or four tackles. I probably have six in my NFL career. It's the hardest hit you ever laid out, and and we've talked about this before, but I love this story. Sorry, the hardest hit you've ever received. Um, the okay, laid out or received? 
Uh, I want both. Okay. Because we can even go back to high school because you played linebacker in high school. I did. You ever, I have a good story. I have a good story. I have a good story about the hardest one I ever delivered. So we were in the state semifinal junior year. I'm playing uh, linebacker. And actually, we're playing a Schwabanon, Mike Taylor, uh, Schwabanon. He was a Wisconsin player that I played with, linebacker. And they had the ball, like it was like second in goal from the two. Okay. We ended up winning this game, but I'm playing linebacker and I'm just. I'm using my reads and I'm reading that they're going to do like kind of a QB sneak. Um, and so they try to pull off a QB sneak. And I meet the QB in the hole. I kind of go like over the line of scrimmage and I just drill this kid. And he, for the, for the sensitive viewers of, of the audience, his head kind of like, like, you know, snap back the other way. Uh-oh. I broke his face mask. Oh, wow. That's a Brad fact. Brad Norman. That's a fact. Brad Norman. There is a whole part of me that you guys don't even know on the football field. You broke field. a man's face mask. That's I wild. did. I did. did he had did he come himself. back into the game? Eventually. Yeah, not that not that possession, but uh, he did come back into the game. Tough kid. Um, yeah, because so, Brad Norman's laying hits out there. That's right. That's right. Um, so that was the hardest one. Chase I Wolf dropping dimes, by the way. Let's nice go. Ball. This accuracy that he's displaying is incredible. Yeah, he's, it, it dis- he's got zip. Yeah, it disappoints me. He was hurt most of the season because I, I don't know that Graham Mertz finishes the season as a starter if we see this. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Really, by the way, I did some research on pro football yeah, reference. Start, Brad, yeah, they, they have you listed at selfie. two solo tackles and two combined tackles. So – that's probably about right. Four. Oh, oh, he's 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 about to question that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and look That's at the film. List. Yeah, I have to go back and look at the film. Put on the tape. Send it. Yeah, send get, it get into the, the NFL statisticians. Get the tape on there. Get the yeah. tape on there. <laughs> Love it. All right, what do we got here? Second down for the Badgers after a, a five-yard Chesma Lucy uh, rush there. On we should have a two-score, two a two-score lead here. We should. Couple drop balls, couple shoestring tackles, brutal. Oh, we've got I mean, it was their three. one play. They had that one big play that you know mm-hmm. you should have been. We had a couple. We had a couple missed plays. Yeah, Michael Fertney down, so he is playing uh, for the Badgers, who entered the portal and then rescinded his decision about a week later to enter the portal. Uh, he is down, so trainers taking a look at him as we get a timeout. Score remains seven to three, Oklahoma State in front of Wisconsin. In the ever so anticipated guaranteed rate bowl, the one everybody's been waiting for, uh, here on our special watch party edition of ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day, of course, brewed by Coors Light and presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Alex Stroh, Brad Norman, Colin Russo, Hunter Vaughn, all with you here on your Tuesday evening. Colin Russo, our honorary Bucky tonight, uh, has only had to do three push-ups thus far. But if Wisconsin, can I should to have to do a lot more at this point. But I, uh, I guess I got lucky. Hey, if you want to do more, that's fine with me. I'm not going to stop you. No, but like I'll play the game. But we should have another way of like the Bucky challenge. I say each punt, Strofe should do some, or Brad should do some, or something. Wow. You're really trying to spice this up. Yeah. Brad, parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, I love the story. He checks in on Brad. He's doing push-ups at that. Brad, <laughs> how, how, Brad, how far away from your parents do you currently reside? Like you're at your parents' house. You drove over there. For those of you that missed it, Brad drove to his parents' house strictly to do this show because they have hard hardwired cable, and yes. he he wanted to be on the same you know timing as all of us watching on cable. It, um, so how long of a ride is that for you? It's 20 minutes. It's no big deal. I would, gladly, I would gladly make that sacrifice for our team. And that's really what it is, right? I mean, I'm just trying to be a team player and, uh, you know, be, be in sync with my guys. I'd do anything. I would drive, I'd drive two hours to be in sync with my guys. How about that? You're a dedicated teammate. We right. appreciate you. Um, Colin Russo, just dropping hellos. Uh, <laughs> give, a, give us a verbal one, please. Hello, hello, hello. In, in our private chat, which uh, is, is, he's just sitting over there chuckling. I see him chuckling. I'm like, what is he laughing at? Uh, do you think you're funny, Strickland, because he said hello? I, nobody makes my, uh, I make nobody laugh other, more than myself. I'm, I make myself <laughs> laugh all day. I can, I, I'll be, you've seen it, dude. All the stuff when I'm giggling at myself because I'm just making myself laugh. I don't know. 
Do you think you're an egotistical person? Wow. <laughs> so hard. I think anybody in this business has to have has to be slightly egotistical. I actually do agree with that sentiment. Uh, but I am not my own biggest fan like Colin Russo is his. I don't know if I'm my own I'm my own biggest fan. Your I, mother doesn't count. And that was not a your mom joke for the record. Sure. Oh, I love me. Right, a little TF. I don't think I am. All right. Good stuff. I don't think I am. <laughs> All right, just to kill I think the that's awkwardness fair. in here. We, I uh, think that's <laughs> fair. We, we are luckily back from commercial break as the Badgers continue on offense. Michael Furtney has been uh, helped off the field. They're, they're taking a look at uh, Luke Fickle's Ohio State career, um, which makes me uncomfortable because we've talked about this plenty over the course of the last month. But, you know, there's there's always that, that question in the back of your mind, right? If Ryan Day at Ohio State gets fired, who's their first phone call? Not Fickle, not now. Oh, wow, look at this, double reverse. This, like, double it, reverse. like the aggressive oh, tackle. Just a bit, oh. yeah, nice shove out of bounds, just short yeah. of the first down marker. But uh, it'll, it'll be third and one for the Badgers with 11 minutes to play uh, here in the second quarter. Uh, exciting guaranteed rate ball. I don't think Ohio State goes near Fickle if it's not at least for a couple of years, right? I don't even think Day, Day is like 45 and five, and he's going to the playoff again. He's well, lost Ohio to Michigan State twice a year. I, I understand that. I understand that. But like. <laughs> What's the what's the what's the alternative? You know, I don't know if it's not Ryan. Ooh, wow, nice nice run by Malusi there. there. Big first down. Yeah, good vision. If it's not Ryan Day, who else are they going to go after? That's actually they're going to have to change everything. And, and that's what I'm wondering. Like, is is Luke Fickle a significant, you know, improvement from Ryan Day? If you're if you're in the eyes of Ohio State, I mean, he, Ryan Day would have what? to go. Probably not. They're getting years. every five star. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Does Wisconsin get an out of state five star in the next four years with Luke Fickle recruiting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, within the next year. Wow. Whoa. I mean, we out of state five star. Are, are, we, are we seeing the guys he's bringing in? He, he flipped like three, four star guys. Yeah. yeah. But uh, an out of state five star within the next year. Okay. I mean, with already getting that quarterback, that four-star quarterback. Right. I I'm mean, that, five star is different. They don't have a lot of five stars. There's not a lot of five stars out there. How many is there typically? Like 30? 40? Per position? No, per, per class. I would say less, probably like 30 or 40, right? Yeah, yeah, less than 50. Less than 50. That's pretty That's pretty good. <laughs> well, is, is Wisconsin one of the top 40 destinations? You can't think of it like that because these guys go to the same spots. Well, yeah, right. Not with the NIL now, though, they're not. They're already showing Colorado. Hello, Colorado. Yeah. True. Would, would a former five star transfer count? Those five star transfers are not five star players, so I would not want them. You wouldn't want them? Well, so okay. then you're not uh, excited about. I'd be okay with them, but it's one of those things where, like, if you're a five star and, like, you're, unless you, like, I either see play issues or commitment issues or something, five stars should play. At wherever they go, because they should be good enough. And uh, I don't know. I just unless he's playing every snap and he's great and he just wants to change the scenery. That's one Ooh, good, nice good first down carry there for Braylon yeah. Allen. Hard uh, spot three yards. Brad, uh, was there stars? Did you get any stars when you were being recruited as a punter? Three stars, boys. Wow. Let's go. Three Let's stars. go. That I actually good. bumped up our recruiting yeah. class a little bit, huh? I was not a liability in our recruiting rankings. Oh baby, that they want to give the, now. You, would, I, I hate to say this, uh, but I need to hear it. Though I mean, the three star specialist is like a four or five star position player, right? They're not going to give right. a four star, right? So there, and I think there is only like, um, I think there's only four or five three stars, like per punter and per kicker. I think there is a. I think it drops to two after like three guys. I believe four that. guys. In a college locker room, do players still talk about stars? No. Okay. No. Never. Been done up. for me lately, Rusev. Yeah. Never comes up. Now, did you get the three stars because you also played linebacker in high school? So, like, this guy can hit. And tight end. Don't forget about the and tight, tight end. end. That's right. They, they they didn't have me as a punter. They had me as like athlete. A T H. You know that. Oh, kind of baby! <laughs> you are the. 
worst human being, Brad Norton. That I love athletes, right? I just love. Sorry, I'm fired up. I did not know that. Part of that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, they they thought. That, I mean, you don't just get two solo tackles and two assisted Ooh. tackles without being that. That's a nice little play right there. Little Hayden Rucci catch, Chase Wolf into the red zone for the Badgers. Fresh set of downs. Get those arms ready, Russo. We're doing ten push-ups shortly. <laughs> Oh boy. It is Chase Wolf stuff. looks pretty comfortable in there. He looks he more comfortable than Mertz has seemed all year. Oh. I mean, you're right. But I don't know if I buy that. I think I think Mertz has had a couple of games where he looks there and he looks pretty steady. Oh, yeah. Mich- Michigan State, when he's throwing to literally nobody, he looks super comfortable. Right. So that's not an example, but with like there is other examples in which he probably did play pretty solidly. And and but, true. I are, mean, you, are you a Mertz defender, Colin? I was this year more so than I was not. I mean, I went out. We Brad and I went after him at Monks and Sun Prairie post Minnesota game, yeah. but uh, we also I think so, though. there was a uh, hundred yes, but uh, there was examples in which I actually defended him after that Washington State game. I thought Mertz was one of the best players on the field for us, and uh, I don't know, he was up and down. More Why down. are the headsets sponsored? I'm so bothered by this that the High V grocery store is on the headsets. And it's nothing. It's nothing against High V. It's just I I don't get it. Are there High V's in Madison? There is. Good. Oh oh boy, DK with the spin. Short. Short. Is he there? He's a little short. short. Short, but good for the first down and goal. It will be at like That's the like three inch you. line. Three inch line for the Badgers. I think he's short. That's tough. DK's got some toughness. He's a junior. Junior. He's a junior. I think he's in. Uh, that's a total. Oh boy. I I that's not a good angle. Is there another you angle? You gotta pause it a couple frames before they did. Huh? Not They're good. Not even reviewing. Little diamond formation. Ches Malusi into the end zone. Drop down and give me ten of them, Russo. Here we go, baby. Score. We're doing 10 here. Bad Badgers, they take the lead. Well, you got to wait for the extra point. Don't get going yet. You got to wait for the extra point. I'm not, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 well, you can do nine and then you can do 10 if you want. That's fine with me. But uh, Badgers take the lead in the guaranteed right bowl over Oklahoma State, making nine to seven with about five and a half minutes to go uh, here in the second quarter in the first half. Uh, extra point attempt will be coming here in just a moment and then we will get our honorary colin russo what is this angle look at the camera angle on russo right now <laughs> yeah there at the ceiling all right extra point is good and here we go Wrap them out Back we're gonna the students one, one two, two three, three four five, five six, six seven, seven eight, eight nine, nine ten. ten we got it in Badgers take the lead, ten to seven over Oklahoma State in the guaranteed rate ball. Get oh, after man. Yeah, we need about forty more points out of Bucky. I, I I need to really push the limit up limit for uh you know self anointed push up guy, Colin Russo. <laughs> you couldn't wait to get me doing push ups right after. We <laughs> oh no, can't wait a moment. I mean, after you went on your little tangent a, a bit earlier, you know we've been doing this about ninety minutes now, but shortly uh, after we started, you said yeah. I'm a big push-up guy. When we were in quarantine, I was rocking out 250 push-ups a day. I, no, no I, problem. Okay. I started off with like, because, you know, you got to like build yourself up with that. It's a lot of it's like a tolerance thing or it's like an endurance thing, I should say. But um, I used to do like, it would be like 80 a day. Then I got up to like 100, 120. And then you kind of like have to start mixing it up, you know, like the different types of push-ups. And that's kind of when you start getting a little more creative with it. And then I kind of yeah, just like, fell off. Brad, if I asked you a question like that, would you get the indication from my tone that I wanted you to explain further your push-ups that you did in quarantine? Or would you gauge that I'm making fun of him? Uh, I mean, I was reading, I was tracking with you pretty early on there, Strofe. But I mean, this well, is well, clearly sorry, Brad, Brad wanted to hear about my different push-up it. formations and Strofe interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is an area of passion for Colin, so I don't, I don't blame him. All right. gonna, okay, if you could, if you would drop down right now, I'm not saying do it because hopefully we have a lot of push-ups to go. Drop down right now. How many could you do 
until fail. Until like, you know, you get to that midway point. I want to find out tonight. That's why we're going to chase Wolf Ball. Uh, if I was like stretched out, ready to roll, no, like, I um, wasn't like burnt out at all, maybe 45 or 50, maybe. Very, re- very respectable. We need we need 52 points then, Brad, is what it's saying. Like, I know. I, I, know. If I'm, I can't, I wouldn't be able to do it after I've already done <laughs> Like if we if we score fifty points, I've already done like hundred fifty prior. There's no way I could do fifty points. That's true. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Right now, like post thirteen push ups, I could probably crank out probably forty. Yeah, you're probably nice and warmed up now. Yeah, nice and warmed up. You know those mascots when when a team scores fifty points, sixty seven, they really are. They're doing like elbow push ups. You know, they're they're not. Well, it's also hard to do push-ups in those uniforms. You got to keep that in mind as well. That's true. That's true. Even then, they're not getting the. Uh, I'm not sure our Buckies are getting the W all the way onto the board. I agree. But you know, that's like your one thing, though. If I knew I was going to be Bucky, I would be doing push-ups all summer. Yeah, well, you, you, you'd, you'd be you training train. for that, no doubt. You you got to be training for that. A couple of days a week. All right, let's not go. I would do 500 push ups a week. That's so, what you're do. Stacey Bruner, our friend at, at Bruner Realty, um, he was Bucky for several years when Brad was playing, I believe. Oh, um, really? And, and he's like, yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he's ripped still 10 years later, but uh, I could never do that. I'm just not built like that. Even if I trained, I don't think I could rock out 50 push ups on command. If you trained, you could definitely knock out 50 push-ups. Yeah. How long am I trying? You've seen how, me. Now. How many push-ups do you think you could do right now? Stretch for 10 minutes, do it right now. How many do you think? <laughs> well, stretching for 10 minutes. I think I could rock, <laughs> I think I could rock out about 22 push-ups. Okay. Well, that's where they're getting the blood flowing, doing yeah. like moving around, right? Well, yeah, what was that? This one. I'd be doing a lot of this. <laughs> getting your shoulders moving. You know, yeah, okay. Move. Yeah, sure. That's- Crack the neck of the timer. 47 push-ups. NFL legend. Sorry, you cut out for a second. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, I'm not following you. 147 is your number, Brad. 147? Your number. Can I could I, my number 147. No, I couldn't I couldn't do that. Maybe like maybe like in a full thing. I couldn't I couldn't do that all at once. All right. So none of us are built to be Bucky, I guess is my takeaway from this conversation. Yeah. Not to mention those mascot uniforms, whatever you want to call them, they've got to be so sweaty. Hot. They got to so smell hot. too, right? Like, yeah. I've always wanted to be. How do you a wash that? How do you wash that? You can't just throw That's it like a, great a question. you can't just throw it like a commercial washer and, and, and dryer. you can't dry clean it. <laughs> no, I should take it to the dry cleaner. No, that's, That's a great a question. Gross. How do you clean a mask? Do the team costume? managers help you out who help clean the clothes? Like the team equipment guys, do they help you Again, out? They're using commercial washers and dryers, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a whole I wall think, of I think them. you're on your own. Do you have to just like air it out and just like oh. some Febreze it? Think, my my guess the, is they Febreze it and air it out. No, that's an awful guess, first off. <laughs> what? What do, you, what do you think you, they do? You think they're just using a bottle yeah, of Lysol yeah, spray? Like a dish soap and spray. Lemon <laughs> pledge. Lemon pledge all over the motion <laughs> W. Right? Like, what? No. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, no. I, I don't they're know what? how to They're it. what? They're what? <laughs> <laughs> I can just tell you they're not wasting a bottle of Oceanside Febreze. <laughs> And, and just letting it hang out, you know, in, in section 204 of Camp bottle, Stadium. A bottle of the Febreze should get you through half the season. That's my take. No chance. For a full costume? Yeah. Get you through half a season. Oh, you're so full. Yeah. You know, they use that you know how day. strong Febreze is. Febreze, you get in, let's say there's like, the pants are probably one piece, right? Because it's not just like two legs. Yeah. It's one piece, the big pants. You... <laughs> Each pant leg, one, two, one, two. Pants set. You do it in the helmet. Literally a second. Bang. Then you get the torso, probably three, right? And then boom, done. That's six seconds. Breaking news. We have a, we have a note from our friend Jesse Nelson. Um, he says, team managers wipe the mascot costume done. I've seen it done with Kaboom the Gargoyle. Which we can get into in a second. Uh, at Bradley. Takes like five minutes with some soap and a rag. 
I'm shocked that Jesse Nelson would drop that he went to Bradley. Oh, no, you're not. So but, uh, Kaboom, the gargoyle? What the hell's a gargoyle? Yeah. It's like one of those, like, it's gothic. A, I'm, I'm getting, look, I'm getting killed for my takes on um, – uh, currently by everybody at ESPN Madison about my my headset sticker um, anger. I asked you about the kickoffs and like what it does for momentum, and you responded <laughs> with kitchen. I mean, with a uh, grocery store and oil <laughs> like sponsorships on head coach. I don't think I'm personally more likely to buy oil of that particular brand. Because I saw Mike Gundy's headset with a sticker on it. Well, you're not a Mike Gundy guy. What if you were a Mike Gundy guy? Oh my, they're going deep. Wow. Oh, uh, it's, it's caught, but I don't think wow. he's in balance. I don't think he was in balance. What a catch. Oh, oh my God. To answer your I'm sorry? To answer your question, it's called frequency. You need to well, right. see it, the it, logo it, and the it, name a image lot. As, image association is, is what is somebody said yes. to me. But... Again, there you go. Phillips 66 on Mike right here. Like, that's oil, I think, right? What's and the one on top? Yeah, it's a gas on station, top. I think. Is it yeah. a gas station? So you think I'm more likely yeah. to go pump up with gas? Is that, uh, come on. I think if you're a Mike Gundy guy and you see the Phillips 66 versus like a random. That doesn't, but that doesn't indicate that that Mike Gundy uses Phillips 66. It totally does. That's the point of the sponsor. This is not an endorsement. This is somebody <laughs> This is somebody paying uh, for the headset fee. So it every totally coach does. on the Oklahoma State staff wears what a you, gas station logo on their ear. What do you see it on his on his ear on his ear set and you and you assume he doesn't use it? Of course he uses it. It's on his ear set for a reason. Jeez, give me a break. All right. What's on top? I think that's La. No, yeah, live full. Oh, it's, it's all over. He's got three. It's of all them. over. It's on top too. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know the of the Philip sixty six there too. What's, what is a gargoyle? Anybody know what that is? A gargoyle is like the the stone thing that's not a building. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a gothic. Frog? It's like, it's like no, a gothic. No, you can't be this dumb, Strove. You can't be. What do you say? He asked if a gargoyle was a frog. It sounds froggy to me. No, it doesn't. It's one of those. <laughs> it's one of those statues they put outside of skyscrapers, like on the second levels and stuff, right on the edges, right? Yeah. Am I wrong on that? Wait. Like, so they that have is... wings. They almost look like a dragon. Yeah. The, the like Bradley University. The Bradley University mascot is a is a stone statue. Yeah, they used. I'm pretty sure they used to be like the Braves. So then they changed it, and then somehow landed on gargoyles. I'm well, sure. No, they're, they're still they're there. still the Braves. It's oh, they are. Habit. Then that's then that's really weird. I thought that they went full all the way away from it. Right. How could you have a gargoyle mascot? So, so Jesse sent us a picture of the mascot, and you still asked if it was a frog. <laughs> what? Jesse sent us a picture of the mascot at Bradley. Oh, I, I I've not seen this yet. Wow, okay. that is ugly. That is ugly. <laughs> Can we pull I, that up? Wow. That is that is awful. That's the stuff of nightmares right there. <laughs> I'd be bat. intimidated. So is, is a gargoyle a bat? It's got wings. I don't know if it's a specific I, I don't <laughs> all right. It's, it's definitely right. not a I'm gonna look freak. up the definition of a gargoyle for you, Stroke. All right, yeah, that'd be great. Uh four minutes, forty seconds remaining in the first half of the uh very entertaining, guaranteed rate ball. Badgers 10, Cowboys 7, and it is Badgers football, second and 11 for uh, Chase Wolf. Running it out of the pistol formation here. Two receivers left, one to his right. Um, little pistol formation. Have they, have they gone to this yet? i got to be honest. I haven't been paying attention a lot. They've, 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 they've been using this the majority of the half. I think Colin's right. They might not have comfort, comfort with him taking Either the ball. Either a center thing or a center and wolf thing. Yeah. Yeah. They literally ran the play action from under center that they got the completion. But they haven't done it off. nearly enough as. Yeah. <laughs> no, because they're going to like a spread almost air raid offense. Yeah, it's, sure. I'm telling you, it's to get the the guys that are coming back used to a spread offense. Huh? Think I know it's crazy, guys, but I might know what I'm talking about every now and again. Maybe. <laughs> when do you want to do the second question of the window into the opponent? Uh, after this Badgers drive, I like that idea. Is, oh, Wolf. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. I'm pressure. Oh, wow. A little, little sidearm dart to Chimray DK who goes out of bounds after the first half. Nice. 
Chase, Chase Wolf is playing like like he doesn't have a care in the world. It's Chase his last Wolf. game, right? Or is it kind of a little bit of a sidearm? Nice. I can, the elusiveness in the pocket that is not easy to keep your eyes downfield oh. and then like shake someone off. Look at that. That, was that is so hard. It's a tight spiral. What do you think right. the average? What do you think the average ticket was to this game, guys? <laughs> I don't, average, to, I don't want to answer that question. It was a couple hundred bucks, probably, right? A no. couple hundred? No, not a no. chance. 160, under, 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 what, under. what is this? Maybe the 72nd most popular bowl game? There's not a lot of college football out in Arizona. There are, there are quite a few of Badger fans on the West Coast that I would bet went to this game. Okay. I don't know if I'd go to a Badger game if it was uh, a couple states away. I don't know if I would. If the Badgers yeah, if it was near Connecticut, I should say. If it was in the if it was the Pinstripe Bowl, would you go? Yeah, yeah that's that, that's a train ride away. I could I'd probably go to that, but uh, depending on the day, obviously. But um, what if they if were playing like the, if Pennsylvania? Were playing like, yeah, if it was something like yeah, I don't I don't think I'd go to one in Philadelphia. No, Philadelphia's a pain. It's a pain. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Have you been? It's those problems right I there. have been. Yeah. It's all That's right. Great totally. boards layout. They got the Sixers. That's true. They got the Phillies, and they got the Eagles away from the city. Got its own train system. Got its own, like, big couple bars. And then that's it. It's perfect. Massive parking lot between Massive them. Massive parking. Sure. You could drive there. You could take the train from the city. It's perfect. You know who else has that is Kansas City. The yes, yes, and the Royals. I haven't been there. Same thing. I love. I, that's. I know they share the parking lot with the Royals. Yeah. Yeah. Best steak I ever had in my life was in Kansas City. What was the name of the restaurant? Uh, I was Stock Hill. Wow. Oh, also, the most that. expensive meal of my life, but so I definitely earned it. it Wasn't willing to. Uh, who's that? Todd. Wasn't willing, wouldn't win. Oh, he would have yeah. went. Strofe was there. Uh, don't, don't, don't do that to Strofe. <laughs> would have went. Strofe was there. Though. Take that off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it. Don't blame him. What's up, Todd? Good to see you. Uh, as we are, uh, uh, what, uh, ninety-seven minutes into this one here on our ESPN Wisconsin College Game. That is guaranteed flown by. Wrote, I, watch party. Flown by. Can I? That can, can I say that's flown by? It has flown by. Majority look, at the, look at the time Nobody of possession. Nobody's even said anything about the stash. Time of possession, Badger was about 22 minutes. Oklahoma it's, State just it's over. It's legitimately the been that one play that they had with that bubble screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 0 for 5 on third downs. Stick around. We're looking forward to, in just a few minutes to the Adam Mertz halftime show, which has been trademarked, by the way, and patented. Uh, so Adam Ertz, obviously a longtime scribe in the Madison area, also a longtime member of our panel. Uh, every Saturday on ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day will join us at halftime of this game. I believe he is at an event of some ah. sort, like a family gathering, good as a Braille and Allen gets it into the red zone. Good for a first down there. He should have shaken that tackle. Jeez. Does Mertz we, still have the beard? Do we know? Uh, are we talking Graham or Adam? Adam. Graham, Adam. I don't know if Graham can grow one. Uh, I, I I will not judge Graham Mertz on his ability <laughs> to or to not grow facial hair. <laughs> that was an unbelievable uh, diss. Well, not even here, a, Hunter. He's not I defended that guy for three years. I'm allowed to take shots at him now. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. All right, here we go. First and ten at the uh, the Oklahoma State 15 yard line. I formation here for Chase there we go. Exactly under center. A little uh, play action. Little... Throws it wide open in the end zone. Dude. Touchdown, Badgers. Hayden Rucci. <laughs> Let's get him going. Got the uh, got the Badgers up to 16. Will be 17 points. And our guy Colin Russo stretching Dude. it out, getting ready to pump out 17 more touchdowns. I'm gonna get to my 17 angle. more push-ups, rather, as the Badgers had another touchdown before my the angle. Half. What an angle. This is my angle. Yeah, it's your <laughs> angle indeed. It's good luck. Good, good luck. Yeah, that was beautiful. Wow, yeah. Chase Wolf looks good. He, he's also playing like he has nothing to lose, and that's the best way a quarterback can play. That's facts. That's facts. 44 seconds left in the opening half. The point after attempt is up, and it is good. Push up 17 worth for Colin Russo as we pull it. 
two, two three, three, four, five, <laughs> six, hello, five, eight, nine, ten. Hunter, hello. <laughs> hello. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow. Well done. No hesitation. That looks like a guy that's done push-ups in his, in his past. I'm yeah. out of my prime. I've said this before. I'm out of my prime. I mean, you look good, though. You look good. Not bad. Not bad. Not real. Uh, if we what? win by – if we're up by 30 at any point and we have, like, over – or at least if we hit 30 tonight, Strofe and Brad, can you guys join me for the push-ups? If we get I to will, 30? If we get 30, to 30. If we hit 30. I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Yeah, I'll do it. If we get because thirty points are pretty big milestones. I'm not sure if we'll do that. I'll I'll do it with you. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you a shot. Hey, question from Tommy in the chat. As you just oh, said, you're out of your prime. Uh, when was the exact moment that the Colin Russo prime ended? Push up prime. <laughs> right. Okay, I actually have an answer to this. I got COVID oh, right. right when I got to school my freshman year of college because that's when COVID was, and um, that's when I got uh, delayed back I don't, know, I, I don't know what's happening that I... <laughs> why do you so keep saying hello to me? I'm trying to be a producer and get things posted okay <laughs> let me do my job honor your thoughts <laughs> you have solid form you can do uh, about 30 more push-ups than i could ever do so i'm impressed there we go unreal has the ESPN Madison office ever had a push-up competition? <laughs> I, uh, I cannot attest to that. I have never been a part of one myself. There's never been a combine. Uh, not that I am aware of once again. That's uh, a good idea. But I actually love that idea. That's a good – Tom, if you're listening, that's a good idea. But like, are, are we, like, rocking out who can make the most copies in a minute? You could do some office-related stuff, and I think you should do some athletic-related stuff as well. Oh, big sack. Big, big sack. sack. Brings up third down. 30 seconds. Is this gonna, the clock's going to run out. Yeah. They call timeout. They call timeout, yeah. I like it. I'd say it's been a good half for the Badgers. I mean, I don't know what more you could ask for. This is this is a more lively team and a more crisp execution than I was expecting. I was expecting a bit, bit more clunky. I, I said it again. If you take away that one big play, it's been utter domination. And th this should be a bigger lead than what it is. Absolutely. There's definitely, I would say, at least 10 points that are left that has been left on the board here. So uh, uh, you got to be impressed with what they've done with a guy who's probably not going to be their quarterback next year. Yeah. So it, so let's say Wisconsin goes out, continues to play well in the second half, wins by double digits plus, kind of keeps up this domination. Who who gets the credit for this win? Is it Jim Leonard get the credit or does Luke Fickle get? The I think credit? it's gonna. What they're gonna say is all credit to the guys. That's what they're gonna say, yeah, and the players are all gonna be like. We're so happy for Jim Leonard. We hope him the best. I don't think it's going to be the Luke Fickle show at all. I think the media is going to make it out to be the Luke Fickle show. But it's going to be between the players, the guys within the roster, the media. I think it's going to be kind of a thank you to Jim Leonard. And I think for the, everybody else, it's going to be the players showed up and did what they had to do. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I'm really worried. And it's probably just because Graham Mertz has soured me so much that <laughs> We're just seeing another, like, it's another version of the, oh, my gosh, we have this amazing person coming in. They have an amazing first outing. And then I'm just going to have my heart broken. And that might just be because of the last couple of years of Badger football. Yeah, you're but not seeing another so game for a while. Heart. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You're not seeing another game for a while is what I'd say, right? I mean, yeah, and we didn't see another game for a while in that COVID season. Because then after the game, everybody got COVID. So, and the Badgers next I'm just year, a pessimist. Open, yeah, they open up with uh, Buffalo at home next year. Interesting. And then they're at Washington State, and then Georgia Southern at home. 
Good Badger outing there as they're showing the fan section. You were right, Brad. Badger they faithful, travel. they travel. It what really do you think is the best traveling college football fan base? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. I guess, I, guess, I guess the right answer to that is like the, the, the college football fan base with the most national pull, right? I mean, it helps if it's a big school that's dispersed, mm -hmm. right? Um, Would you say it's Big Ten or SEC? SEC is more rabid, I would say for sure. I would say a Texas school, no? What about Texas? That That, that is a name that came to mind. But yeah. they, they haven't been as good as they were, obviously. In like I, I just, yeah, Texas, Nebraska, you think they're up there? And Nebraska's probably up there. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Michigan, I'm sure, is up there. Yeah, sure Michigan, I thought of. I mean, Bama, uh, it, it, we'd be remiss not bringing them up. Yep. Does Georgia travel that well? You know who that's a good question for? Adam Mertz. As Adam Mertz is coming Adam up shortly. Show. Coming yeah, up. Adam, uh, I, I cannot confirm nor deny whether or not Adam Mertz will be performing something for us. Oh. Given that it is a halftime show. Cannot, can neither confirm nor deny. He's got it. He doesn't know it yet, but he's performing something. <laughs> yeah, he's, he is singing us a song. Uh, clock's going to run out here. So we are going to halftime. Or I can take a timeout and do a Hail Mary. Come on. Let, let Wolf fling it. Let him. Let him fling. He's showing he can do it. 17-7 at the break. Badgers lead Oklahoma State in the guaranteed rate ball, which means our show is half over. It is uh, the ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day guaranteed rate ball watch party. Say that five times fast. Across all ESPN Madison digital platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Share it. Retweet it. Whatever you're watching on. Send it to your friends. Send it to your brothers. Send it to your parents. Whatever you got to do. Uh, get it out there. Watch the game with us. Enjoy the second half with us as we uh, we roll on. They're taking a break on the field. We're not taking a, a break on the watch party. As look who's being interviewed by Stormy Buo Nanpanani. <laughs> Other than the one and only Real Luke Fickle. I think I hit that pretty good. Luke Fick, man. Sweating a little bit. Not calling the plays. But he's still getting involved. Still sweating. I see a little like condensation on the forehead that's how you know he's he's engaged at least he he might have been running on the sideline and you know colin russo-esque like you run down the sideline with the players that that would be all he could go back in the locker room for all i care that's all i need <laughs> to see i come on come on strofe your thoughts oh what's the question your your thoughts uh, on, on what exactly you didn't ask a question, Colin. Open ended. <laughs> the end. Um, <laughs> look, I, I'm fired up. That's what I'll tell you. I, I don't know about you. How are you feeling, Badgers fans? Hit us in the comments section. We'll feature your comments. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Let us know how you're feeling after one half of action. The Badgers up ten. But again, and I asked this question earlier to Brad. He's biased. He's going to say takeaway. What is the grand takeaway of this game tonight? I don't know that there is one. <laughs> We were talking about it. You okay there, Strofe? Something just fell off a wall, I think. I the Strofe no house all just falling apart. I have no idea what that I'm sitting yeah. on the couch. Hold on at the Park it. Bank ESPN Madison Studios. I have no idea what that was. Brad Norman's nowhere to be found. We can't get Adam Mertz on the line. Colin Russo's we're here. We're off the rails. <laughs> so you guys heard that. Yes, yeah, I thought your house was haunted. Oh, I'm going to go beautiful. investigate. I'll be right back. Hunter, oh, just me and you now. Here's how this is going to go. A week and a half ago, Hunter Vaughn is a Cowboy fan. Oh, the Cowboys Lord. played the Jaguars last Sunday. Why don't you stop talking for a while? No, no, no. They were up 27 to 10. What were you thinking? Of? Were you watching the game live? Uh, I was listening to the game. I was driving, and I was feeling very confident. Okay. Very when they started getting back into the game, nice. when they started getting back into the game, were you nervous? I got real nervous, and then I said a lot of really awful things at my TV so, when they cut to the game, and it was bad. So they tied up to get to overtime. What are you thinking going into overtime? Remember, that Jags get the ball first. I think they get a first down, then a quick. Another three plays off the field. Cowboys get the ball back. You think you're going to win at that point? 
Oh yeah. I was, they're getting a field goal. I was like, Tony Pollard and Zeke are going to run all over that defense. It, there's no question they're going to just easily get a field goal. And then Dak does what Dak typically does in big What moments. are we talking about right now? What are we talking about right now? What did I, I miss when I was investigating whatever broke in this house? became the Colin and Hunter show, and we're talking uh, we're yeah. right. so, so Let's, look at, let's look at Colin's comment. Colin also with one out. I would like to point out, just like uh, our buddy Colin Russo up here. Colin on YouTube says, kind of wish we had more time with Chase Wolf. There I say. I said it earlier, Colin. I'm with you on that. It I sucked he had the leg injury this year. Yeah. He looks really good. He looks good. I would love to see something. I mean, yeah, it sucks we can't see anything out of Nick Evers, but that's the guy. You know, he he that that's that's gonna be a four year commitment guy. If uh I mean I I doubt he's gonna be like a two year NFL pro- prospect, but you know, that's that's gotta excite people, right? It's got there we go. Collins one L right there. Loving that. Finally, some action amongst the Collins. When when's oh, the last time that we thought that the the Badger quarterback room was going to be full of talent, right? But this recruit that we just got, and now he's further down the road, it'd be some time before he's there. But yeah, two years for him. But uh, you, you bring in Evers, and then you've got uh, uh, Lacru also. The, the I think Lecrue. it was a four star prospect out of Colorado. So you got to be excited about it. You've got Miles Burkett just waiting in the wings too. I hope we get some Burkett action in the second half. Up ten, you'd think Wolves playing really well, but. If, if this becomes a blowout, we better see some miles per cat. I think that's something I know a lot, a lot of people were excited to see per in this game. So we'll see. Is the quarterback room next year going to be the most talented quarterback room in Wisconsin history? Well, there's a good response from Brett on Facebook. He said, Mertz and Cone days, two count talented quarterbacks. Fair. On paper. Cone was a talented quarterback, but Mertz uh, more of an on paper type of talent, right? Is that fair to say? I would say that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know Hunter's Grant Mertz's biggest fan, so I just didn't want to like step on anybody's toes. Not after that Minnesota game. No, I think he's over it. I think think now that he's turned his back, I'm saying this tongue in cheek, of course. Now that he's turned his back on on Hunter and all the Badger fans, uh, Hunter's over it. He's he no longer runs the is Grant Mertz good Twitter account. I never did from the start, and yeah, I probably would have stopped. You did. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, time to get back into the Pella window into the opponent. Of course, the game in which Hunter asks us a question about the Badgers' opponent. Of course, Oklahoma State and the Guaranteed Rate Poll. We do five questions of this every uh, ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day pregame show. Obviously, we're with you during the game. So it's trivia time, baby. Question number two of the Pella window into the opponent. Hunter, go ahead. I brought this game up earlier with Bedlam between Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. What year was that rivalry game first played? There was no stadium, so we got that. We know that part. Was it A, 1894? Oh yeah. B, 1904? Or C, 1914? I like 1894. There was no stadiums. They're playing next to a frozen river. Yeah, there were definitely stadiums in 1914, right? Camp Randall was right around then. Um and so you'd think there would be something more than that then. I, I like the 1800s. When was the when was the start of the Wisconsin Minnesota rivalry? We know that's the longest one. I was gonna say, yeah, I'm not gonna say this. Go say it. I was gonna say the start of World War One was 1914, and I don't like how that would not be the same year. That's a weird. That's thing. not the right year. <laughs> that's that's weird. You shouldn't have said it. You were right. That's my bad. <laughs> no, you it's the thought process. I'm like, you listen. shouldn't have said it. I, I, I agree with that. I um, was thinking, listen, all right, Colin. Prince Ferdinand was assassinated, I think, in like May or June of 1914. They wouldn't start new bowl games six months later. <laughs> do it. But I'm not oh, sure. The God. U.S. was not heavily involved in World War I. Okay. So you got to think of the this battle. It was a bowl the- game. It was a rivalry <laughs> game. The sinking of the Lusitania, let's double check. That was May 7th of 1915. That's an excellent point, Bradley. So maybe they started the new ball game and then they got involved, wrapped up in World War One. <laughs> but ultimately, if there's world dramatic events, you know, everybody's on ice. I don't know if they're going to be starting new bowl games. That's just me. I don't know. Call yeah. your shot, Russo. You, you've, you've taken us completely off the rails. <laughs> You get to answer the question. I do think it's earlier than 19. I think it's A. Is A your final answer? I also think it's A. 
Nope. So four. It was 1904. Oklahoma won that game 75 to nothing. Oh. Woof. Think yeah. about doing the, think about doing 75 push-ups in a row, Colin Russo. Was, 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 Buck, was Bucky the Badger pumping out push-ups in 1904? No. I think they, they built them different back then, though. I think there's like I imagine some like dude who's just stout, bare knuckle brawl type of guy who can just hammer out push-ups. All right. Uh that is question two. We'll connect with Adam Mertz shortly on the Adam Mertz halftime show. But in the meantime, we're going to do uh, questions for a for, for questions for a former player. That was easy for me to say. From uh, Colin on YouTube once again. Saw some tweets about changing cleats at the half. Is that a thing? Are there different cleats for this ice rink they're playing on, or will they deal with this all game? Bradley, as Colin Russo just so eloquently called you, is that true? Is, there, that, is that a thing? That's a thing, okay? So, and I didn't even know this. So, the, the most players have the normal cleat, right? And this is particularly important for, yes, skilled players, but linemen. They really drive it home for linemen because you've got the – it's almost like a tennis shoe that the linemen wear with all these small cleats throughout. They're not as big or long as you think they'd be. They make a big deal when you go out into really slick fields or fields that you know are kind of muddy – and don't have a whole lot of uh, grip on them. And they put in these super long cleats. I mean, super long. If you get stepped on it, you you would go like right through your hand. It's a it's it's pretty it's pretty wild. They don't wear them often though because of the risk of injury. Right when you have cr- cleats that can grip into the ground that much, you're that much more likely to have a non-contact injury, have your foot stuck in the ground, get rolled up on. So they only use it when they're specifically. Like, it's a requirement for the field. Like, there's just no way we're getting any traction. Therefore, we need to use this cleat. And then, obviously, it's sort of self-fulfilling. The ground has more give. It's more slick. So then there's less injury than normal if it's long cleats. Usually, this is something that is talked about ahead of time. So most linemen and skill players will have multiple sets of cleats. They're going to say, make sure you pack your spikes. Make sure Because this field requires it. I wonder if they have prepared for it. Because they're obviously they don't know what kind of surface they're going to experience in the bowl game, right? And you know, so I, I would bet that the equipment team brought extra pairs, but I would doubt everybody has a set of long cleats. Terrific! What an answer! See, this is why we do this. It's questions for a former player here on ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day. Whatever you're watching us on, you can comment with your question. Ask Brad Norton. Bring it on! Anything. Bring it on! Uh, Colin Russo and I are also going to ask you a question at some point, but we're not ready to do that yet. I also want to bring this up since it's the, you know, it's halftime. We can talk about this briefly. Brett asked and and Brad will lead with you, but I'd also like to chime in on this. I think Colin and and maybe Hunter will as well. You think Mertz is going to cut it at Florida? Graham Mertz announced, uh, I think it was last week. He's transferring to the university of Florida. He'll be a Gator. How do you think Mertz is going to work out in that conference, that, that, uh, that locker room? Gosh, I, I don't think it's going to go well, to be quite honest. Um, oh, boy. I hate to say it. I really do. I don't think a lot of his issues – I think it will be a great f- fresh start for him, right? Maybe he'll be able to regain some new confidence. I think a lot of his accuracy issues will not be able to be fixed in one year, and I think it's going to be even more exposed in the SEC. I, I fear for what it will be like when he goes up against defenses like Georgia and – Alabama, and I think if he thought it was hard in the Big Ten, yeah. it'd be harder in the SEC. So I'm, I hope I hope he does great. I really do. I give him a ton of credit for all he's gone through, but I thought that was a, a strange landing spot. For I agree, I agree. I thought Kentucky made a little bit more sense, um, you know. But but Mertz has has always been big brand. I think he wants to prove now he can be big ball too. But I, I agree. I, I'm I'm totally with you. Right, the Big Ten. By no means is easy, right? It's it's debatably the second best, maybe not even debatably, the second best college football conference in uh, in all of college football, uh, given, obviously, your your sample size of the college football playoff this year, right? 50% of the teams uh, of the four are from the Big Ten. So it's a very good conference by all means, but the SEC is even tougher. So I, I'm intrigued to see uh, how that goes. We'll get to Adam Mertz here in just a minute, who's, who's about to join us. But Colin, uh, real quick, 
your question for a former player, Brad Norman. Brad, former player. College, let's do college first. You know, you could talk about it, whether it's in, a, in the form of training camp, practice, or a game. When teams come back post-practice, everybody's all, you know, just had a long practice. Showers. Who goes first? Is it first come, first serve? <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> wow. Okay. So what a question for Adam Mertz to walk into. The beard's gone. Go on. The beard's gone. <laughs> okay, without further ado, the shower situation. I don't know how it was for you guys in high school, but we did, I did not shower ever with like my team afterward. Never, ever, ever. Wow. So my first – I know. We just went home and showered. So my first experience with showering was after my first workout at Wisconsin. I'm like, okay, we're really? doing this. Bunch of dudes. Um, you gain comfort, of course, with doing it. If it just becomes a part of the – how, <laughs> how, how many showers were there? Uh, I think there were in college, I think there was like 10 shower heads on either side. Okay. Not a ton. Then there, there was like those on the, on the outside. And there was a few in the middle that the, the classic, like old ones, the water wouldn't even get warm. So that's where like, if you really needed to shower, you'd go, but it was first come first, first serve. Um, most of the, the seniors would, or starters would be respectful of like waiting for someone to show up every once in a while. If, you know, a stud walked in and your freshman's on it. Just be like one of those. Like, wow. You're done. They You're done. Somebody out of shower. So we just saw Adam Mertz left. He just left <laughs> because I think he walked in. He's like, I don't know what the hell I signed up for. I'm out of here. Um, so I was going to get to Adam Mertz. I can't believe that's the place that just went. Uh, you never know what you're getting with Colin Russo. It's officially Wednesday where Colin Russo is. Fascinating. Uh, so we, we will get, to, I'm going to send, I'm going to send Brad Nortman on a task. Uh, as we attempt to connect, uh, reconnect with, with our buddy Adam Ertz, who we'll check in with here in just a second. But Brad, uh, we mentioned earlier, you were in your parents' house. That's correct. It, was that your childhood household? That's correct. So that is the place in which you grew up? That's right. Is there a senior photo of you on a wall somewhere? Um, yes. Can you go retrieve it for me? Yes, I will. You're there with me. You're so it's just you and I now. Just you and I. We'll have Mercy. Mercy. Oh, we got Mercy. No, we don't. Oh, looks, looks like we're having some uh, technical issues with Mercy. So we'll, we'll we'll attempt to connect with him in a second. Um, you got a question for Brad as well. That was my question for Brad. I wanted him to go receive a senior picture. Okay. Okay. I see. I thought the shower question was fair. I was curious. The shower question was odd. I did not. I did not think that's where, where we were going. Uh oh. All right. Didn't take right. long. He's on Here the stairs. Go. So what we got here is a bit of a, well, we got three. We got three here to choose from. I'm going to work Oh, my from, goodness. Oh, my God. It's going to hold you. Brad Nortman, senior photo. Oh, oh my God. Look what do at you think? that haircut. Have I, hey, I know. I had long hair back in the day. That looks nice. like, like an all, all-American all young man right there. Just Look at that. Whole, whole whole they didn't do any, him. like, yeah. And then we have some uh, full body shots. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that nice. pose. Nice. Look at that pose. Oh, no. <laughs> and then to close it out, we got another one. Kind of oh, different. yeah. Another you got to get the one, one foot oh, higher. Oh, oh, loose yeah. khakis. Bare, bare, <laughs> loose khakis. Bare feet. For anyone that knows me, I hate wearing socks. I hate wearing really? socks. Really? I love, I love, yeah, weird, right? For Are you currently barefoot? You know, I'm not. That's actually okay. weird. I, I usually would be barefoot. And I'm, I'm wearing Wisconsin socks right now. It's probably oh, good. Very, very festive. Yeah. Very festive. Um, All right. Yeah. There you go. I appreciate you indulging us in, in that. Um, thank we'll you for your back. service. Yeah, I, go put I it saw back. no airbrushing. There's no evidence of airbrushing. No, no way. airbrushing at all. It, it is time now, as you hear the, the voice of the great Adam Mertz, it is time for the Adam Mertz halftime show, which of course is trademarked. Mertzy, <laughs> Chase Wolf looks terrific. The Badgers lead by 10. Your early takeaways, first half, guaranteed right full. Man, you know, like um, when Chase comes out at first and throws the interception, you're like, oh, yeah, yep, I've seen this movie before. Um, and he just really settled in. I was impressed. I thought it was going to have to be ground and pound the whole time. And it's been pretty um, It's been pretty exciting. It's been kind of cool to watch him. What is he, 11 or 12? His last yeah. 12? Yeah. Like sprinting him out and um, getting him active a little bit. It's kind of fun. One mistake. It was that interception early, yep. right? He, he looks yep. he looks terrific. We had, we had people commenting earlier, you know, we almost wish we had – we got to see more Chase Wolf this season. Obviously, had the leg injury, but 
I don't, I don't know if it would, if it changes a lot of results, but he looks really polished uh, for, for not playing a ton. So I'm impressed with him. Yeah. And you know, obviously I had Norton in flashbacks in the, in the, the first half too. Oh, baby. It's oh, oh, great. As Kirk Kirk Street once <laughs> like famously called said. it. Yeah. That was I fantastic. Mean, I was watching that was just beautiful. So beautiful. And uh, I got flat. I said, when it happened, my adrenaline was pumping. I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep tonight. That was just like, that was so exciting. They still got it. They still got it. Exactly. Mercy, you, you had a beard at one point. Why did we get rid of it? Did, did the wife put like the, the, the hammer down and say, all right, no more. Yeah. You know, like, so yeah. you guys, you guys are both wearing, I know, I know Brad has, got, you know, has got a little going on during the season here too. You know, you reach that point where you're, you're past the stage. You get past like the initial scratchy stage, but then I started letting it go too far and not grooming it. And then it starts getting more like mountain man. And you start pulling at it and just doing, you know, fidgety stuff with it. And then you start drinking water and it gets just kind of caught all in the beard. (laughs) And you're like, I don't really know about this anymore. This is not, I'm not, I'm not in the backwoods. What am I trying to prove? So that was partially my decision, but let's be real. <laughs> like when when the wife when the wife is kind of like the beard's got to go, you you have to make a tough call. Sure. To Did you announce call. it like I'm gonna go shave my beard, or was it you walked in with a beard and walked out and everyone then reacts? Um. So she knew. I, I went down. We went down to Georgia to visit my kid and uh, um, Thanksgiving, and I brought the Clippers with me. And so oh. I didn't, she knew, she knew the Clippers. She knew it was coming. She was anticipating. She was beginning wow. pretty excited about it, but yeah, I went in and took care of it and then walked out. Huh. And, then, and then like, you know how it is. Like uh, the kids were like, Oh, I <laughs> kind of forgot what you look like under that. Like and I couldn't chin? tell yeah. if they liked it. There was not, there was sort of like one of those reactions where it seemed like I wanted to read it as a totally positive thing, but it didn't really come off like that. I'm telling you, it's a look, Mertz. I've been telling you that for three months now, man. <laughs> I've been telling you that for three months. It's a look for sure. Um, we, we wanted to ask you about, cause something got brought up earlier. You know, we've been doing this over two hours now. Yeah. Uh, what, which college football fan base travels the best? Um, Georgia was brought up. We, we thought you might have some insight into that. As you just referenced, uh, your daughter is a student at the university of Georgia. Who do you think, if if I ask you that question, which college fan base travels the best? I mean, that was always like, did this start with how well Wisconsin used to travel back in the day? I still think they traveled well for this game, but obviously it's not like a premier bowl. But yeah, yeah, that that was essentially the root of it. Yeah, all things considered, and like stall question while I well it was stalling while I stall tactic while I answer that question. A little filibuster, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, like that '94 Rose Bowl. I drove out there with a bunch of buddies. In fact, I'm like hanging out with a few of them tonight, old college friends, and um, it was seventy thousand Wisconsin fans in the Rose Bowl that year. It was just absolutely insane. People were so um, you know starved for any kind of moment like that that everyone made the commitment to to go out there um and a lot of people got fleeced on tickets i don't know if you guys remember that or had heard about that but there was a lot of fraud uh, oh, going time out. Out, only half the pla- panel was alive for that mercy <laughs> well i know but uh, sometimes uh you know word travels by legend by oral history Fair point. um but so like today's modern day i mean i think wisconsin fans still do really well but the novelty is worn off it's just not it's not the same effect of, you know, going to the guaranteed rate bowl. It just doesn't do it. Um, Georgia's good, but you think about like when they're good, like this year, I mean, they're going to be playing in the peach bowl. Well, like what is that? You know, of course they're going to be there for that. I'll wait and see who shows up for the the national championship game. If they get through in LA, but um, they're good. Um, Nebraska, we brought up. We Nebraska's. Yeah, for sure. And they were they were like the original legendary uh, northern invasion in the in the Orange Bowl in the 80s. Yeah. You know, they just they'd show up like crazy. But again, like what is there to do in Nebraska? So that's sort of a it's a default. Like you save your money all year and you go to the bowl game. Got a Braille and Allen 15 yard carry on the uh, first play of the second half. So good stuff. There. A little bit. That's not ideal. Uh, we were hoping he would be fully healed up. Not great. Uh, Mercy, what's the big takeaway? Like, what's the, are you looking for a certain big takeaway today? Because I'm I'm finding it hard to like be like, okay, yes, this happened. I know that makes me feel better about next season. 
Yeah, not really. I want to see, um, I always just love seeing, I, and I feel like this is Wisconsin's advantage through a lot of these, especially mid-range bowls, is like guys still play, guys still compete. And I want to see that attitude and I want to see that spirit. I mean, like no better year than this year when you're auditioning in front of the head coach, obviously. But um, but it's just fun. Like I never feel like Wisconsin guys take off of a bowl game like you see some other schools do. Right. And that's one of the things that's rewarding to me. Um, the, I mean, I think the Chase Wolf story is pretty cool. I I didn't, I mean, like, frankly, I was, if you had asked me before the game, I've been like, well, I want to see Miles play because I want to see what he can bring. But um, for a kid who stuck it out that long in this program and has basically never been able to contribute in any meaningful way, that's a, that'd be a really cool storyline to go out on. So I don't mind that at all. But I think mostly it's just like seeing dudes who, just seeing dudes ball out with you know, nothing on the line except for pride. What's the spread tonight at your uh, at your social gathering? What do we what do we serve up? We had uh we had some uh, some homemade um, taco mix with like the slow cooked chicken, you know, and oh. then you you know oh. the adobo peppers in it. Get a little get a little fire. Had some guac. Um, yeah. What else? Look at this guy. Man? Yeah, it was. Where was, was, where was our invite again? Did I lose that in the mail? <laughs> <Or>? <laughs> <laughs> if it was in the Madison Metroplex, we could just host it from there. It would have been perfect. That, now, that, taco dip. We got some like spicy guac. Is this supposed to be some sort of like Mexican, uh, you know, Arizona bowl type of menu? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little like, right, right. Yeah. I was going to say Tex Mex. Is it still kind of Tex Mex if it's in Arizona? Or is that just in Texas? Sure. Oh, that's a good question. I would think yes. Same, same area of the think. country. Right. A good question. Good philosophical question. Is we are we are running on fumes here. Third quarter of the uh, guaranteed rate bowl. <laughs> All right, Mercy. Well, we appreciate you. Um, I, I assume you, you do. You have a TV in front of you currently, or are you totally I, missing what we're watching? I don't currently. I was. I had to step out of the big room with everyone in there. It's like these are a bunch of old college buddies. It's great. Like this is about what um, UW is all about. We've been getting together every year for what, 31 years, 32 years now. Wow. So uh, uh, not always at this time of year, but it just sort of worked out that the date that everyone was available fell on the bowl game. So it's cool to go back. We're like, you know, recounting all of our sorted tales from past get togethers. It's a pretty good time. Well, thanks for stepping away from that. We really do appreciate it. You're the best. Always good catching up and uh, uh, go Bucky. I hope we see another fake punt in the second half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, was was that a was that a prop was that a prop bet? Uh, I'm not sure if it was. I w- it was the over under yeah. two? <laughs> Should be one and a half, right? Like if Norman was playing, we're getting like four of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Certified first down. We're game planning against it. How can we stop him? <laughs> Offensive weapon. That's right. Wait, Colin, where did Drew Pine land? I saw that he landed somewhere. Arizona State. That's it. That's it. Another Pac-12 school. pac 12s getting uh, gonna have some quarterbacks next year. They're gonna have DJ Wagalele, I think his name oh, is. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. Uh from uh Clemson. He's gonna be at Oregon State. Oregon They're gonna State, have right? Bo Nix back. They're gonna have Caleb Williams, Michael Penix at Washington. Yeah. Then Drew I- Pine at Arizona State. Drew Pine, <laughs> one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Also the uh, old arch nemesis of uh, of our, nemesis. our own Colin Russo. Uh high school buddies, really, really good pals from buddies. <laughs> Well, Mercy, go enjoy the second half. We appreciate you. Awesome to see you. Hopefully next time we see you, though, the beard's back. All right, I'll talk to my wife about that. I'll see if I can get a, like a, a little bit of a pass. Let, let Brad know what he can do to help, because I know he's eager. <laughs> he's eager to help. So. Three squeals. Deal. Deal. <laughs> Thanks, Mercy. Good to see you guys. You, Mercy. Right back at you, buddy. That's a great Adam Mertz, of course, uh, of our ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day crew. What a, what a gentleman stepping aside from his college get together to hang out with us. Very nice. Like Didn't have to do that. No, we're all just losers, right? We're not hanging out with friends. We're just sitting <laughs> in our parents' basement watching this bowl game. And Mertz's <laughs> eating Tex-Mex spread with his uh, college friends of three decades. True, true sacrifice there. It is. Sure, right, what are uh, Stevens points grads doing tonight? <laughs> It's a great question, Colin. <laughs> As you know, I'm currently in my uh, I'm in my girlfriend's parents' basement that's falling apart. Uh, Where is that? Uh, I'm in Green Bay. Green Bay. Okay, she's from Green Bay as well. Okay. Yeah. According to Tarek Sala and Derek Engler on the Great Dane Huddle driven by Metro Kia, uh, it is your 
future ex mother in law's basement. Oh, was that? Was, was, That's was what they referred that? to it as. They just went right for the jugular tonight. <laughs> Yikes. Well, you take and, one you know, night off. Yeah, right. You take one night off from those goofballs and they go straight for the throat. Wow. That's really funny, you know, for being honest. Um, <laughs> I miss those guys. I'll be back with them Monday night, I believe. Uh, no. But what's next Monday? The second? Uh, actually, mm-hmm. Monday's the second. Yeah. Tuesday's the third. Are we working on Monday? No, that is a holiday. You're just. You're having a rough night, Strove. Punt, Brad. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's punt, Brad. Time for a punt. That's right. <laughs> Another fake? No, Bunabich actually booted that one. Good punt. Not great coverage. Ah, too much mustard. Goes into the end zone. Uh, score still 17-7, to Wisconsin over Oklahoma State. 10.45 to play in the third quarter of the guaranteed rate bowl. It is ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day Special Digital Edition as we are with you on the ESPN Madison social platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Share it, retweet it, send it. Give us a comment. Tell us where you're watching from. We got you in the comments section. Uh, we just wrapped up a, a question with a former player. We also wrapped up the trademarked Adam Ertz halftime show. Uh, but I believe it's time to get to question number three of our five. For the Pella window to the opponent, our ongoing trivia game in which Hunter tries to stump us by asking us questions about Oklahoma State. We are 0 for 2, for the record. But uh, we are the comeback kids this season. Those last three questions, we've got to be hitting at about a 75% clip. So I uh, I feel good about question three, Hunter. Yeah, the last couple questions are usually when I start giving up and try to go with easier ones for you guys because I'm that tired. Sounds like, that sounds like an excuse, but go ahead. Maybe. Uh, I mentioned the Bedlam rivalry between Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. How many games has Oklahoma State won in the 117 total meetings between the two schools? Is it A, 19, B, 29, or C, 39? Hmm. Can you repeat the question? I got How lost. many games has <laughs> Oklahoma State won against Oklahoma? Oh, 19, that's it? 29, <laughs> or 39? <laughs> I thought it was harder than that. Um, uh, out of 120? 117. 117. Boy, 19. sounds safe. How much? 29 sounds safe. Yeah, 19 sounds incredibly few. Uh, I will I will point out, just as Colin Russo, your usual job is to dig into the philosophy of Hunter writing these questions. He's already done a B and an A. Both of them have been B. Two Bs. Good point. No, C and B. We oh, guessed right. B on the first right. one. C and B. Yeah. It's not, it's not 19, though, I don't think. That can't be 19. That 29 or 39 has. Hunter's to be. had a month to come up with these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote them today. Subconsciously, you had a month to think about it. <laughs> and I thought about it today. You give I me too much credit on these. Dad, questions. what do you think? I think twenty nine is safe. I think so too. I can't imagine it's nineteen. Let's go twenty nine. Final answer. Nope. It's 19. nineteen. Dang, they've gotten owned in this rivalry. Not much of a rivalry. Yeah, it's only a rivalry because like they're like forty five minutes apart, right. yeah. and that's it. Similarly to like Wisconsin Marquette hoops. Yeah. Hunter, who's Oshkosh? At least won a you know national championship since. Got to be Whitewater, you know, right? After who's, the Korean War. Who, who's uh, who's Oshkosh? I haven't won a tournament game in a decade, by the way. Badgers won one uh, nine months ago. Uh, what's yeah? Who's Oshkosh rivals at Whitewater? Yeah, it's Whitewater. A little bit of point in basketball, but the football one really takes it, so it's Whitewater. Shout out point. Hunter, do you try to make an Oshkosh game per year? <laughs> um, no. The last Oshkosh game that I attended, I was on the call for a heartbreaking semifinal loss against Mount Union where the Titans pulled in Atlanta Falcons and blew a 25-point oh. lead in oh. the second half. That was the toughest game I've ever had to call. So you'll never – I thought for sure I was going to Virginia. You can't foot there game. again without thinking about that game? Oh, no, it's just then I started working at GKB and worked in our wireless division, worked a lot of Saturdays, and now I work with you guys on college game day, and I prioritize you guys over going back to my alma mater because there I love you. There you go, Colin. 
There you go. He loves you, Colin. Say it back. Well, you and Strofe. <laughs> uh, Strofe and Brad. Colin, you're all, you're okay. Colin, say it back. I love you too, Hunter. <laughs> Good. I love Good. you. Oh, yeah. We're set. Oh, and I have our issues, that. but we, we, you know what? <laughs> it's all love at the end of the day. Yeah. 12.23 Eastern time. And Colin's dishing out I love yous. Hopefully he's dishing out some more on Tinder later. Um, <laughs> Can we get some Tinder time with Colin tonight? Not a chance. Please. I, I did get to take Late control of, Tinder. of Colin Russo's Tinder account on, a, on an episode of Rutledge and Hamilton several if months only ago. Only that girl responded in time. Radio girl. Unbelievable. I found his wife, fellas. Have you followed up with her since then? No. So you got to stay persistent, Colin. You got to show that what? you're interested. You can't just Colin, send one message. Is 12, and this is 12 swiping. This was me. <laughs> yeah, but you control your Twitter, your Tinder account, right? You can send yeah. her other messages. Yeah. But another punt. How many is that now? We got to be in the double digits. A lot. I hope we get to 30. I think we are in the double digits. I think that was the Oklahoma State's. Fifth or six, at least, just for them. We're at nine punts. Okay. When Oklahoma is State has six. Yeah, Madison. Three. Combine going to be. When is it going to be, or what is it going to be? It both. You tell me. Should I organize it? Yeah. It's got to be a summer thing. Yeah, got to be outside. No, okay. We could do it outside in the winter. It's Wisconsin. Tausche and Nortman are just going to destroy us. Do you have the former athletes participate? Yes. Okay. I need to know how, how close I'm coming to Tausche. They got to organize that. I would just be curious what, what type of uh, what would Matt, events we're what, doing. What would Matt Hamilton win at? Anything with precision. So like darts, mm. beer pong, okay. et cetera. Have you played those games with him before? Um, I've probably played darts with them. Okay. It's a pretty good. I'm, I'm, being particularly... I'm, I'm good at darts. <laughs> That's the one thing I am good at. That's how not you, a joke. How did you get, how did you get good at darts? By drinking a lot of Coors Lights and taverns. Yeah. That's as good as a way of, do you, are you better after more Coors Lights or less? Um, last night's example would, would tell me I'm better with less. Okay. Um, but that is not always the case. Are you a darts guy, Brad? Not I'm not, I'm really. not talking cigarettes, of course. No, 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 of course. Um, no, not really. I mean, like, I can hold my own with any any given average Joe, but I, I would not consider it, like, I'm skilled at it. Okay. You know, you know what uh, Matt Hamilton would be great at? What's that? Shuffleboard. Yeah, no doubt. Obviously. For that a second, like, I thought you were going to be like curling. No, well, <laughs> yeah, curling. Brad. He would be good board, that. That's like the miniature version of curling. Shuffleboard, right? that's a good game. It's a fun game. Yeah, I love, I love me some shuffleboard. That's fun. Interesting. Okay. We got to set up that combine. I'm very curious. Who would that win the speed? Speed? Short, short range. So what, what are we doing? A 40? I think I could do like that. You could do a 40 okay. or a 60. Baseball guys do 60, but you could do 40 because it's football. Uh, I'm not winning. I'll tell you that much. Brust? I say, is this just content team or are we getting the sales team involved? I say you, you get everybody. Because if it's everybody, then we have a member of the sales team, Ben Wittes, former Division three basketball player. I think he's beaten uh. all of us. In a foot race. Yeah. If it's just content, I, I like your chances, Brad. I can hold my Maybe own. Ben Brust, but I think it's between you two. Huh. I don't don't all jump. <laughs> I'm the youngest guy. You know? Girl zoned out. <laughs> I got the fresh legs. <laughs> I'm zoned out. We're, we're, we're coming up on a two and a half hours of this. I didn't realize how long of a long haul this was with no breaks. Yeah. I got the fresh legs. Why did nobody choose me? <laughs> because I don't think you're that athletic. Can you pump out 17 push-ups in a row? Yes. But you are a self-declared push-up guy. I'm a decent athlete. I'm not a jumper. <laughs> I'm a decent athlete, but I can't do this I can't. or this oh, or yes. that. Right. 
I'm not wow. a great jumping guy. It's Lateral movement, I was solid. I was a good defender. Not good at most athletic things. Lateral movement, I was solid. Explosion, okay. Quickness, okay. Front end speed, pretty damn good. <laughs> Colin, are you phased by criticism? Because no. Strofe and I have just been coming at you now and <laughs> just keep rolling through it. Yeah. <laughs> I encourage it. I <laughs> encourage I do as well. I do as well. It's fun. Brad, how are you holding up? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. As we've already touched on, this is now getting much, much past my bedtime. Yeah. But we got the we got badgers on TV. This is this is what we train all year for, boys. Now it's, it's third and ten. Like but we still got a ways to go. Do yeah. you prepare for a show like this by taking a nap earlier in the day? I am not a nap guy. I love naps. Yeah, I just cannot take a nap usually. I did try to lay down. Could not fall asleep. Hmm. How about you guys? No, I actually am not a nap guy, but I actually did take one today. Yeah. Not in preparation for this. As I just referred to, I, I may have hit it hard last night. So I'm off. You guys I'm, I'm off this week. My Are you off this whole week? Uh, I'm back Thursday. And we'll, do a, we'll, do a, we'll do a high noon hour uh, on Thursday. I got to talk about the Packers. And it's it's amazing. I've gone two and a half hours without talking about the Packers. I'm True. so fired up. Interesting. Okay. That was a bad third yeah. down try there by the yeah, it was. Rodgers there. I don't like it's that. been an ugly By Rodgers? Bad, bad third down try by Rodgers, huh? I didn't, I didn't say Rodgers. You, you, you said by Rodgers. You, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> you literally what did. You, what, what did you say then, Colin? You said bad third down try by Wolf. <laughs> not, not, not what you said. That is what I said. Nope. You guys should say punt. Good punt. Another good punt. Punt number uh, that is number 13 of the night. 10. No, That's, 13. We're in double digits. Look at the ACC 2 and 0. Oh. Combined punt number 13. Number yes. Number four for the Badgers. And Oklahoma State is nine. First Big Ten bowl game. Okay. Oh, really? That's not a good sign. No. Hmm. Well, the Badgers took, what, fifth place in the Big Ten West? Yeah. yeah. So, who didn't – who was oh, school eligible? Nebraska? Uh, I don't think Nebraska North was. Northwestern? So, I guess we were think- four – don't think they were. Yeah. I guess that makes us. Yeah. There's because there's seven teams in each side, right? Uh, yeah. It's the it's the big fourteen, not actually the big ten. Yes. Yes. Does that bug you guys as much as it bugs me? Like the Big Twelve doesn't have twelve teams. The Big Ten has fourteen teams. We'll be absolutely 16. it does. Like I don't even like the idea of Penn State being in the conference for the Big Ten. It's the ten. I, I could I, never. I see Colin Russo pointing. What I miss. You watching? Almost. Or do we pick it up? You going to tell me what happened or not? Cone's just going to stare. I'm not going to spoil it. Look. Did he catch that? Here's the replay. Oh, little interception. Nice. In Oklahoma State. Takes it away. Russo's just going to point at the television <laughs> instead of telling us anything that happened. I didn't, know, I didn't know if we were like glassy. What is it, boy? What is it? That? I was engaged in a good conversation, Russo. My bad, dude. Well, I'm sorry. We had to talk about the interception. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what let's is Chase go, Let's Wolf score do? here. I need to do some push-ups. What does Chase Wolf do in Oklahoma State Territory? I need to do some push-ups. Brad, your thoughts. Well, on that play, leave it up to you. I mean, one, I'd love to see you do more push-ups. Two, <laughs> this is the place to get into an offensive rhythm because it seems like we have worked our way out of it. Yep. I don't know how he had that intercept. He like literally just, I'm, I'm going to take this ball he from you. I barely even looked at it. Nice first play there. I like it. I like, I like these changeups are thrown in. Yeah. If I haven't seen much of Allen. This drive does. Do we start? bringing in miles at this point i don't know i would like to see him is it, is it too early though i mean wolf's cooking for the most part. yeah yeah he's, he's, done, he's been more good than bad you gotta give him more than that he's a senior. But the offense is stalled out here like if they can get points here 
then okay, keep Wolf in. But if they don't, why not just put Miles in? Well, we'll see. Yeah, we're at the twenty. Uh, I don't hate the idea. We will see here. I, yeah. I love to see him in action. There it is. Big carry. Big carry gone. Braylon Allen touchdown Finally. Badgers twenty yards to the house right side of the end just zone. Like Make it twenty three to seven. Which means we have an absurd, uh, not absurd, but a good amount of push-ups to get to here. We're starting to stack them up. Just a second. We're stacking them up, Bradley. We're stacking we them are. up. Going to be 24 of them after the point after attempt from Nate Van Zels. Uh, assuming it is good. It Dan was, and, it was child's know. play amount of push-ups. Braylon this, Allen looks pretty healthy. This, this is a man's load all of a sudden. He's, he's, he's moving pretty well, Braylon Allen. He is. Did you guys see, I'll talk about it after the push-ups. This has, has nothing to do with football. Hit it. Nailed it. Nailed it. 24 push-ups for Kyle and Russo or honorary Bucky Badger tonight with 642 to One, play two, in the third quarter. Three, He's just going to count him out for five, us. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Who thought that ten, the highlight of the 11, night would 12, be a college 13, kid in Connecticut 14, rocking 15, out push-ups? 15, 17, 18. You got it. 18, 20. There. 21. Oh, it's getting up. 23. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I counted 23, but it's fine. I'll let it fly. Are you, I was literally counting out loud <laughs> until the last three, and then I did one, two, three. They're going to start to get harder. No, yeah, no, no. no the last worse. three there were got a little tight. <laughs> yeah. Because my arms got a little stiff because it's been a while. <laughs> two, two more touchdowns. Hey, remember when Calvin Russo said they're going to win 23 to seven and they're up 24 to seven? Wow. You've had some wild predictions, wildly accurate predictions. Listen, Brad. <laughs> I mean, I know it actually has been pretty good, but I'm glad. Hey, two score lead, pretty comfortable. We'll see how they do the rest of the game. I'll see Burkett if he comes in, or don't. I <laughs> I, no, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm fired up if we see Burkett. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Okay, let's say let's say Burkett comes in, start of the fourth quarter, gets two or three possessions. Is that really enough to pull any sort of evaluation from him? Probably not. I, but no. the, the thing is, the coaches are going to have their own evaluations. I think from a fan's it's, perspective, you might as well throw him in, see what he does. It's it's the Jordan Love case, right? Yeah. Do, do you really gain anything by seeing Jordan Love play whatever it was the fourth quarter against the Philadelphia Eagles? Not right. really. You know, you, 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 you're impressed with them. But again, like, and I, this is my point in bringing up earlier, Brad. You know, I can't really get any grand takeaways from this game. <clears throat> uh, assuming this is Chase Wolf's final game. But let's, let's play the case. Let's, you know, he has another year of eligibility, comes back. He's the backup or Wolf is back with Badgers next year. Are you feeling significantly more comfortable with Chase Wolf's ability just because of the guaranteed rate bowl and, and, and that he played well against a defense that is, uh, you know, handcuffed by draft designations and, and transfer portal declarations? That's a good point. I, I would say I, I like the baseline that I see. Sure. I like that like he can complete some, some passes, hit guys in rhythm. There's enough to say, okay, yeah, that's good. But he he looks like a, a fifth year senior quarterback, right? I mean, he looks like a guy that he should looks comfortable. Be, yeah, he looks comfortable. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to hitch my wagon to hoping that that all works out. And and no, you really can't you can't take away that much. Um, that's why that's why this it's it's almost weird where bowl games have gotten to, right? It used to be a finale with your team to go out and really close the book on what should be a relatively successful season. If you made a bowl game and because mm. of transfers and because of guys going to the draft and not playing in bowl games, yep. it's really become this bizarre showcase, right? Of like young guys getting their shot. So it's hard to and say. And a mixture of older guys closing out their careers. Yep. Interesting. It is interesting. Uh, Braylon Allen having a really good game. Yeah, he is. Solid. Had a couple big carries. He's got to be up close to 100 yards, I would think, at this point. Yeah. If not over it. Right. Just before it, yeah. Uh, 92. 92 yeah. yards and a touchdown right now for Braylon Allen. Not a bad uh, not a bad little bowl game for number zero. 
to draw a little bit of an unnecessary connection, not even a connection, but I just thought I'd bring it up because it actually is fascinating. Not an NBA guy regular season. Mavericks Knicks in Dallas tonight. Sure, if you're going to get a kick out of this. Here we go. 33 seconds left. It was 112-103. Knicks were up. Uh, Mavericks get the ball, hit a three, down six, 26 seconds left. Miss a shot, get a get her uh, a steal. Luca gets a layup, down four. Knicks make one of two free throws, get the ball back. Uh, sorry, Mavericks hit a three, down three. Okay, and then um, go back down the floor, free throw game. Last second, Luca has two free throws, down three, makes the first, purposely misses the second, gets his own rebound, puts it up, ties the game. They win wow. an OT. They were down nine points with thirty three seconds left. Whoa, going into that game. NBA teams were 0 and 13,884 in the wow in the last 20 seasons when trailing by at least wow. 35 or fewer sections and the Mavericks and Doncic tonight against the Knicks pulled that off. That, 0 and 13,884. That's bananas. That was worth that deviation. That was that's incredible. Yeah, that's, that's that's wild. I read that. I was like, that's fascinating. Random NBA stat for you. Third and 19 here. We'll, we'll pick six. Action. Love Let's to keep see in that. mind, fellas, if we score again, we're all doing push-ups. Oh, yeah. That's a good that's point. That's true. <laughs> Man, the you defense. guys are doing push-ups. Mm-hmm. Great read on the screen. Unless it's, unless it's, a, unless it's a, uh, a field goal, which would suck. <laughs> yeah, let's get a field goal here. I tell you what, the defense has played stout. I know that their offense is completely decimated. Yeah, but hey, man, still a power five team, still yeah. a seven win team, still a bowl game. Got to be happy with uh, Jimmy Leonard's farewell tour here. It's going to be, which I, I told Brad this when it was just Brad and I breaking it down. It was, if they're going to make this to be a Luke Fickle thing, when I think it's probably more so of a Jimmy Leonard thing. Mm-hmm. It's a Jimmy Leonard farewell tour. Fair catch right at midfield. Oh, boy. Good field position. Stroke, that get makes the arm me nervous. Up, yeah? yeah, I better get stretching. <laughs> I better get stretching. Because not only are we doing push-ups if they score another touchdown, we got to jump around in five minutes as well. Oh, God. So I, I got to get warmed up over here, Is man. Is going to play this over the computer? It's taken care of, Colin. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you just relax. Oh, um, no. <laughs> where do we think jimmy leonard ends up for next season i don't I, know i've, I've seen I a have, lot of co- a I lot of comments no coming in tonight about him as the defensive coordinator in green bay i just don't think that's happening i think he takes a year off before we i play. i agree i don't think there's, I, a college, there's not a good college job for him right now i think that's a good point i think actually too after the chaos that was this last season a year off might help him gain some clarity. And it also might help him start to formulate what type of staff he wants to formulate wherever he goes because he's probably going to get a head coaching look. Oh. Well, when you think about it, too, he went right from leaving the NFL pretty quickly to being a head coach. Usually for NFL players, I mean, there's a bit of a of a time period where, like, what do I want to do? Who am I? Like sort of this you know. thought process. He went into it really quickly. And he was all of a sudden thrown into this role of being the Wisconsin Badgers head coach and, you know, being this wonder boy of, of incredible defensive coaching talent. I, I don't know. I think a year off would do him Uh-oh. good. Oh, Uh-oh. balls out, balls out, balls out. Ouch. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not quite right there. Yeah. Chase Wolf. The football. Mm. Chase Wolf gets sacked, fumbles it. Okay, hey, Luke, recovers. get Burkett warmed up. Let's go. Oh, get him up and moving. Let's go. Like a bullpen call. Let's go. Let's get him moving. Colin get Russo going. getting on the oh. phone. Uh, What's your signal to get the bullpen going? You're a manager. Give us your hand signal. It's too obvious. I'll just, I like doing like, I like doing like, <laughs> <laughs> it's too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Get him warmed up. Get him warmed up. (laughs) Gone with a rally towel in the dugout. Hilarious. I think that would be great, but I think that's a little too obvious. Uh, Oh, they're going to take a shot here. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are eluding, rolling left. 
At the 50, lets it fly. Display. Oh, bad it away. Good defense. And Dort's talking that smack after he passed oh, that ball away. He wants it. Nice play. He wants to let him know. Nice play. 417 left in the third. It is ESPN Wisconsin College game day. Alex Struff, Colin Russo, Brad Nortman, Hunter Vaughn with you. Across the ESPN at Madison Socials. Share it, tweet it, like it, subscribe, follow, retweet, share. I'm out of synonyms. Watch Colin do push-ups. Watch Colin do push-ups. They got more in there. Potentially Brad and I doing push-ups. Taking another one. Deep shot here. Way overthrown. He missed him by 10 yeah, yards. Yeah, not even close. Overthrew him by 10 yards. Did Wrangle. What's Wrangle's story? <laughs> it's a good name. Garrett Wrangle. It's a good quarterback name. So meant to be the quarterback of Oklahoma State. He's seven, Garrett Wrangle. 7 of 20 right now. Uh, he's a true freshman from Frisco, Texas. Came into this game uh, 482 yards passing, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Not bad. Not great. Not great. <laughs> but not bad. Where's Brad, in your prime, how far could you throw the rock? Uh, I am not a good thrower. He's still in his prime. Yeah, true. I am not a good thrower of the football. That is not my thing. I've got, I got kind of like not great form. Don't let the one for one for 29 yards of my NFL stats fool you. I cannot throw a great. That's one. that's the best humble brag we've had. On this <laughs> Don't let that fool there. you. Um, what do you think? I couldn't throw it far. I was semi-accurate, but I don't know. I could maybe throw it. 40? Yeah, I guess 40. I couldn't throw it 50, I don't think. I really don't. Colin Russo, same question to you. I would say somewhere in the 40s. I'm hawking that pigskin 55 yards. No, you're not. not. (laughs) Shut up. You guys guys forget I have a cannon. (laughs) No, you don't. So I do. What about a great uh, – if I, if I wouldn't have broken my insert injury here, I would have been, been D1. Oh, you're that guy. Okay. I've never, I've never played a down of football in my life. I'm just you never kidding. tried? I couldn't, unfortunately. Were you a soccer guy? Uh, I jokingly played soccer my senior year of high school. Right, yes. yeah. Um, we were the worst team in the state. Uh, at that point in our entire program's tenure at my high school, we had never won a game. Um, in like eight or nine years of, of it existing. And uh, I start, oh boy, big run, big Good gap. Rail and spins, oh boy. He got like six more there than maybe he should have. Good run there again by Braille and Allen, who then on that carry eclipses. Ooh, there's a flag now. Personal foul. Into the face, the defense. defense. Oh, wow, awesome. checking on. So that'll stand. Uh, that puts Braille and Allen over the 100-yard mark uh, on the guaranteed rate bowl. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I played soccer. I started every game. I stunk. I laid down for for one guy. I was like, hey, you, he's like, I, I need one goal to become my school's all-time leading scorer, and my brother has the record right now. I said, all right, get the ball. I'm laying down. And Were I you did. a goalie? No, I was like a right defender. But he was he was matched up on my side. So I said, if you get the ball, I'll slide. I'll, look, I'll make it look like I tripped. And uh, I did. He got the record. So, see, wow. n- nobody can ever call me a bad guy. Maybe not the best teammate, but <laughs> not, not a bad guy. <laughs> oh. oh, again, b- just bouncing off the yeah. fenders like a ping pong ball, man. If you were in this game and you got 30 carries, Strofe, how many yards yeah. do you have? Good question. Um, not many. 30. 30 carries. If you think I'm making it the 30 carries, you're incorrect. I'm getting injured in 14 they're, they're, different areas. I was going to say. give me the ball. Uh, I'm breaking you four switches, bones. You're on I'm one break- leg. You're still getting the ball. How many uh, rushes do you have? I'm breaking four bones. I'm tearing both ACLs. I'm rupturing a spleen probably. Um, I'm getting 30 carries. I'm getting 19 yards. Brad, what about you? Um, He's an offensive uh, weapon. That's not fair. That's right. That's right. Um, I mean, his, my, my average would say 14 yards per tote, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I would say, I, I don't know. I'm 30 carries. I could maybe get maybe two yards a carry, maybe 60 yards. Just try to fall forward, try to hit the hole, like behind my big offensive lineman and just fall forward per tote. <laughs> that's like the, that's like the question of how long 
can you last in the ring with Mike Tyson type of thing? Like how I long? Not, I did not think that's where that was going. I did not think that's where that was going. Really it's like how how long, how long can, we, can you last in the ring with Mike Tyson? Uh, yeah, Jonathan Brooks. Like how, how long could you actually be in a college football game without getting injured? Oh, Chase Wolf limping Speaking off of the field. Injured. We will see some miles per cap. Yes. Uh-oh. I'll tell you what, if that is uh, if that is Chase Wolf's final throw as a Badger, nothing to hang his head about after his performance today. No, he was really solid today. Yeah. Miles there still he has his headset on, though. But he's shaking hands. They're showing him. I imagine they're talking about him on the uh, on the television stream, of course, on uh, on ESPN. Good punt again. Goes out of the end zone again. It's punt, what, 14 on the night? Good gracious. It's a lot. It's a lot of puns. We haven't talked about this. How did the uh, the winter storm treat you guys? <laughs> it was fine. It was freezing, but it was fine. It was it was a it was actually, a re-entry to Wisconsin. To I honest. actually have a story for you. So I'm leaving uh I'm I'm leaving Christmas uh Christmas uh what was that Christmas Eve uh gathering at my father's household. Um, and he, uh, he lives in Kakana, which is just South of Green Bay mm. near Appleton. Um, they don't plow the streets over there uh, for some reason. And as you guys know, Kyle, That's you know, issue well, or a town issue. That's probably a town issue. No, probably a town issue, city issue. I think it's a city. city. Um, we're not getting into local government issues. But, now. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we've been here three I hours. We I might ask 1250 here. We're getting whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you guys know, I drive the mighty Saturn Ion from the year 2007. Did you get a spare key yet? <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> uh, locked my keys in my car. Kyle and Russo got to witness that. Um, I just start spinning. So I'm going downhill. Two-lane road. So obviously traffic coming from both sides. I lose my back wheels. And I'm going. So if I'm driving this way, I start going this way. And I'm like, uh-oh. Put both hands on the steering wheel. I don't even say a word. I'm just, I'm just bracing for impact. So I start spinning. Luckily, the car is coming my direction. Stop. They saw me spinning. And I spin a full 360 and then wow. another, another 180. And I hit the curb. But again, there's no plow job here. So it's just a pile of snow. I nail the curb. And I'm facing the car that was behind me. Well, like I'm looking directly in the headlights of the car that was behind me. And I, I hit the curb. I, I come to a complete stop. I think in my head, I go, I'm all right. I think the car was all right. And I'm not stuck. So I pull out. I get in the other lane. I start going the way I was coming from. Because I'm, again, backwards. Um, pull off to a side road. My hubcap was missing. Uh, but other than that, I'm in good shape. That's a win. That's about as good as you could ask for. That's a win. Yeah, and that was two minutes into my 45-minute drive. So, uh. So little, you were, in, little anxiety the next 43 minutes. You were, but, wait, so you were going to Kakana, though? No, I was coming from Kakana. Mm. I was leaving Kakana. Coming back to Green Bay. Yeah. So that was my uh, winter storm experience. Hunter, how did the winter storm treat you? <laughs> uh, the wife and I just hunkered down in the apartment. Hunker. And, yes. And decided not to leave until we needed to Christmas Eve to go to my parents. Mm. Up no near Oshkosh. We, nope. uh, my, my household lost power. power. So I was like, that's what I was asking. Oh. I didn't have power okay. for 44 hours, something like that. Oh, really? Was the house freezing? Yeah, we got power back at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. wow. mm-hmm. What did the temperature get down to? Uh, the Great question. The, heat, the, the, hot, the like, bedroom floors were better, right? The floors of, with all the bedrooms on it because, like, the heat was higher and everything. And it was able to, like, stay there. But uh, the main floor was – uh. I don't know the exact temperature, but it was like definitely sweaters and hoodies and stuff like that. Sweatpants. You couldn't necessarily go down there. It was probably in the 50s, I would say, yeah. right? End of the third quarter, fellas. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God there's nobody watching. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Are you playing it? It's not accurate. I can't hear it. I can't Hunter? Hear it either. Hunter, what you do? I got to hear it. It should have been playing. 
Hunter? Hunter! It was playing. We're standing. You got me standing for no reason? I want to jump around. It actually feels good to stand up, though. It does. It's after all this time. Good, we're in a good stretch in right now. Yeah, it's like the seventh inning, seventh inning stretch. <laughs> oh, man. So we're standing for no reason, is my understanding. I guess like one of, we could like play it on one of our phones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frustrated because this worked earlier. Technology loves me. Has ESPN Madison ever done a 24-hour broadcast? Uh, you mean like with the same people? Correct. I don't know that it's been done. Is that what you're? Is that what you're buying for? You want to is, go another? Has that ever been done by a sports radio station in GKB? Uh, do you want to go another 21 hours with just us? <laughs> I'm not saying we could need to do that now, but I'm saying that could be done in the future. It's a heck of a commitment. I don't know if I, I don't know if I have it in me, but I'm willing to give it a shot. So are we not jumping around? There it is. Oh, shit. Oh, baby. I don't know how I'm going to do this with headphones on. What is going on right now? <laughs> Colin Russo is fired up. I'm going to break my headphones and maybe my left <laughs> ankle. We'll find out. That one's just stretching it out right now. All right, I feel good, baby. Woo! Man. Big fourth quarter time. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Hope you got up with us, jumped around a little bit. My heart's beating. As, uh, as, as we go to the fourth quarter, that's the most physical activity I've done in five days. Uh, as we go to the fourth quarter of the guaranteed rate poll, Zach on Facebook <laughs> says, I never thought I'd see a midnight jump around, but here we are. As it is uh, 11.55 p.m., in Wisconsin, Colin Russo to my left um, is uh, uh, almost 1 a.m. in Connecticut as he is back home. Colin, what's going on back there? I can't even see you. I just didn't want to move up the chair yet. You gassed right now? No, I I, I moved around there. Brad, you gassed a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, little I am bit. too. I got to be Not honest. Once was. We're jumping around right here. Yeah, yeah are, that's a lot of Badger around. fans. It's good. It's good. Ooh, they I'm are jumping hard. around. I am parched. All right, taking a shot. First oh, play wow. of the fourth quarter, play. Oklahoma State. What a catch. Wow. Within the 10-yard line. As uh, the jump around momentum did nothing for the Badgers. <laughs> we, we, we gave them nothing. Mm. We gave them all the juice we could give them. Wow. That was uh, – how that would you – if you're watching with us, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, let us know what you would grade our jump around performance uh, on, a, on a school grading scale, A, B, C, D, F. All right, here we go. A uh, little keeper action. Is that what's happened there? It's like a yard short. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do push-ups for uh, Oklahoma State scores, as, as we've established, Colin. So you got that working for you. Thank you. Dude, if we score again, you're doing push-ups as well. So After that jump round, I kind of want to do some push-ups. There you go. I like the adrenaline pump in. Oh, I think you stopped him. I'm just reading, the, <laughs> just reading the, uh, the ESPN bottom line. So Ed Reed becoming the head coach of, uh, what is it, Bethune-Cookman? Bethune-Cookman. Where is that located? Texas, right? I don't know. Is that D1? Oh, Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, ah, think- he's not in. They stuffed him there. On the yeah, they yard. stuffed him. Brings up fourth and goal. Good Look stop. Gianni. Torchia coming in on the stop, celebrating, throwing the hand. Back? I think so. I would think yeah. he's, not, he's not playing in this game if he's not coming back. He would have declared it. Yeah, he would have declared. Yeah, I mean, do you see him being yeah. a guy that can uh, – has that guaranteed 
NFL roster spot, I don't see it. And if, no. and if not, why wouldn't you stay? There he exactly. is. Look at Jimmy. Jimmy. Mm. The farewell tour. 13 more minutes of the Jim Leonard era in Madison. Bittersweet day. Yeah, it really is. We, we, could, like we, we, could, we could really use a classic goal line stand in the fourth corner by a Jimmy what Leonard. What a joke defense. of a setup that is. Did you see the third base line? It was empty. Well, they took a timeout, so they, they clearly didn't like something, which may have been that. The, the, no, like the stands? Well, now we lost Colin. Good stuff. What? <laughs> now, did we lose Brad as well? No, I, I can I think I can hear everything. Okay. Colin, you back? What what, what were you gonna school me about? Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean am I kidding you? Is this we a got, joke? We got the loading wheel in the middle of your screen. This is a joke. This is not a joke. Yeah, it is. You definitely like yeah, okay. This is like okay. I was completely there the whole time. The third base line was empty. Like and the first base line, because like yeah, because like the weird fans had up sure, oh, but that's they, they all like, and they just got bleachers, yes. like high school bleachers. Oh, you're talking. <laughs> wow, it is late. You're talking about <laughs> you're talking about the fan section setup. Correct. I impression you were referring to the defensive line. No, incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so. How how are we set up? Are they playing in the outfield? Yeah, it goes. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's like like think left foul, field. Yeah, think foul pole or foul pole. A little ahead of that, but yeah. Okay, gotcha. You know what I'm talking, about? not like as far yeah, back. Yeah. Like kind of that's the that's your line of. I get the novelty of a playing in a baseball field, but it is really not meant to hold a football game. No, I mean, it's just really not. It's awkward. There's no good way to do it. And I get it. I mean, you can't have the guaranteed rate bowl at University of Phoenix Stadium and have 5,000 fans. So I get it. That'd be weird. Now, it's, uh, I wonder, I wonder if they've announced the attendance. I'd be curious to know what, um, how many people are there? Over under 17,000. I'll get you an answer. I'd say uh, I'll, I'll take the over. Really? Okay. Um, I'm not finding an answer though. I'm struggling with that. I guess 13 is pretty, pretty small. All right, we'll wait to uh, see if we get a number on that. But uh, nonetheless, Mike Gundy's haircut. Having a hard time getting over that. I missed the mullet. I I'm a mother. man. I'm 40. Missed the mother as well. Uh, one of the greatest press conferences ever, thanks to Mike Gundy. To be quite honest, even though that has gone incredibly viral, that is an awesome moment of a coach standing up for a player. Oh, one million percent. So cool. All right, fourth and goal. Here's the stance. Oh, wow. Got him. Go, he flipped it. Wow. Flipped it. Are you going kidding down. me? Wow, what a play. I mean, that's about as perfect as a defense can execute. Yeah. Until the quarterback decides to make a play Brett Favre style. Underhand. Wow, wow what a zone. play. Wow. Wow, what a play. Uh, so that makes things a little interesting. Makes it 24-14. Yeah. 10-point game with about 12 minutes to play. Wow, what a play. That's unreal. He was dead to rights. Wow. Straight up softball pitch. As wow, he's falling pretty, to the ground, falling that's forward. Pretty. That's a that's, gritty play. Impressive. Yeah. Pretty heads up, honestly. By both. Quarterback and receiver. Mahomes did that. That'd be all over uh, everywhere. <laughs> it's true. You're right. Oh, my God. We do love our we, – we, the world does love their Mahomes uh, highlights. That's for sure. Except when it uh, when it includes Jackson Mahomes, then the world doesn't love that. But yeah, true. Brad, did, was anybody ever very annoying when you were uh, in the league? Did anybody like annoy you? Like a, that's that's such a bland question. Uh, um, 
Who annoyed you the most during the game? Outside a teammate tonight. Yeah. I don't I don't think no no one comes to mind. Play, yeah, play the safe angle, I agree. Yeah. Bad, no, bad, bad question. Hand yeah. up, bad question. Uh, yeah. No, Brad just needs to throw somebody under the bus. You know there was somebody that drove you crazy on one of those teams. Um, anyone, NFL, well, it, Colin, uh, let, let's think about it oh. this way, Hunter. Hunter, we can use some process of elimination, right? Like he played with Greg Hardy and Cam Newton, who have driven people nuts on the record. Uh, I mean, never, Greg never Brad. Ne- Brad has never said that. I'm, I'm not putting words into Brad's mouth, but those two guys have certainly uh, made their negative impressions. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I, I would have, uh, I wouldn't say anything necessarily too bad about Cam. Cam was a pretty good teammate and he was, yeah, he was great during my time in, Carolina, Greg had his issues, obviously. That's well documented. Uh, so I don't need to really go much further into that. I think the, the thing that annoyed me, I won't like say names, but oh, yeah. it, it annoyed me when guys were super talented and they just did not give a damn. You know, they just would, they just did the bare minimum and it was their natural God given greatness and just talent that allowed them to get there. And you just saw what they could be. And they're just doing the bare minimum, and they're getting paid for it. They're supposed to be professionals. That drove yeah. me crazy. That drove me absolutely crazy. No, that's fair. But you were you, you were a you were a lab rat, weren't you? First one in, last one out type of guy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't go that far, but okay. I was definitely more of the nose of the grindstone, disciplined type of guy. We've talked about this before, but I always forget the answer. When when you were at Wisconsin. Because, uh, you know, Vunovich has uh, been on the record saying, like, Chris, Paul Chris was like, hey, get the hell out of the weight room sometimes. Uh, they, they didn't, like, did they require you to do weights and stuff? Or, oh, yeah. or what, what, what was the limit? Like, were you treated differently than, let's say, like a nose tackle? Well, a, a little bit, yeah. Um, so we were actually respected because the specialists in my years, we wanted to lift, we wanted to get after it. We actually lifted with the linemen. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah, we did. Well, because we requested that we do a lot of the Olympic lifts, which is like hand cleans and snatches. It's all explosive based. It's all a lot so, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we did that a lot. And I actually, I'm sure Vunavich uh, beat it, but I had the uh, the hand clean record for punters. What was it? It was like, um, it was 200 something. I think it was like 265, 275. Wow, it was quite a bit. I could tell you what well, Brad Vunovich has definitely crushed that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's he's one. He's legitimately one of the most jacked punters in the last. Decade. I can almost guarantee he rewrote every punter record for for lifting. No, I, I think know. actually, I, I think his career punting average, I think it's actually the best in Wisconsin history. I think Were you better. number one at some point? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I think I. I think I. Uh, I think I was second at one point, but ended third. Um. Too many good offenses and too many short punts. Yeah, that's fair. A lot of good offenses. It's fine. It's brutal. Yeah, that is brutal. It's ugly. All right, here we go. Good, good return for DK again. Past the thirty, up to the thirty-two yard line, where the Badgers will take over. Twelve fifty to play in the fourth quarter of the guaranteed rate bowl. We have eclipsed midnight and three hours of our broadcast here uh, on the ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day Guaranteed Rate Bowl Watch Party. I'm Alex Strofe. The Badger legend, offensive weapon, the great Brad Norton with us. Colin Russo to my left and beneath me, the only one that actually went into the office today. Hunter Hunter Vaughn with us as well from the Park Bank ESPN Madison Studios. Is it lonely there, Hunter? Are you are you a little lonely? I mean, I like being alone, so it's totally <laughs> That's, okay. That was depressing. I didn't mean it to sound that depressing. I'm just You're the way it came out. Yeah, <laughs> I like. Being alone. No, I just I like to just be by myself and I like the quiet. So no, I'm good. I'm just coming up on a 13 hour work day already, and we still have 12 minutes left in this game. Oh, yeah, we got another hour probably. Oh yeah. And then I'll be back at it tomorrow producing uh Rutledge and Hamilton with Molly Brown and Matt Hamilton tomorrow afternoon. Where's Jimmy tomorrow? He's Is he not off this week. Is he off this week? Yeah. He worked he was here today, today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
Strobe, you have two tickets to the Ice Bowl in 1967. Are you going? <laughs> minus 13 at kickoff, minus 18 at the end of the game, minus 30 wind chill. You going? Uh, my grandpa was actually there. No way. A fun fact for you, yeah. Uh, my late my late grandfather was uh, was in attendance. Um, yeah, I'd probably. I mean, I don't. I don't think you realize at the moment the historical significance that game has. Championship you know, game, first Super Bowl, Packers rivalry. Um, you know, like. Yeah, I'm going. Probably Brad going. Norman, are you going? Was that a county? Was that a county stadium? Was it at? Uh, I don't remember what the East High School Field was called. City Stadium, excuse me, not County Stadium. City Stadium or Lambeau Field wasn't around yet. It was Lambeau. It was, was at Lambeau. Lambeau. It was okay. named Lambeau in '65, I think, and that was also the year that they had inputted the uh, electrical things in the turf because that was Lombardi's child. That the uh, mm-hmm the heating system that they had underneath oh, the field. And it didn't work that day because Lombardi was so protective over it and he was protective of this and that. And he tried to get it to work that day and it was shot. And that's why the field was completely rock solid. I've heard that story also told though, that it worked when the Cowboys were out there to warm up first and then stopped working. So they wore different cleats. And then I believe according to the rules, you couldn't change them then. So then the Cowboys didn't have the right cleats on that day. Maybe. Particularly for the QB sneak and getting the push. Yes. Yeah, for that Bart store. 21 17. <laughs> Terrific game. I don't know how I anyone know, goes go to, to that a game? Cold Minus game 13. I would go to that game. Are we asking too with like the 1960s lack of technology? We got like hand warmers nowadays. Yes. We got, so you got, okay, you got 1960s tech. Hat and gloves. And go one pair, one <laughs> pair. That's all you get. An overcoat. I would say so. I'm going. Hunter Vaughn, are you going? Absolutely not. And the Cowboys are my favorite team. Anything below like 40 degrees, I don't want to be outside for a game. That's just dumb. I, yeah, I can't no. stand it. I think I'm over cold games. You know, I I, I sweat you it out. You go to the coldest game in NFL history. Right, but we're talking 50 years ago, or what is that? 55 years ago. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'll sweat it out when I'm negative young. Um, but, like, I went to the San Francisco Green Bay game in the playoffs last year. That was a chilly one. I don't know that I want to do that again. See, I did Packers-Bears Christmas Day. What was that, like 2012? And I mean, that was maybe 20 degrees, and then the wind chill got it down probably into the teens. I'll and never that, understand that whole time timeout. Wind chill is the real temperature, right? Why, why do we not? Uh, can somebody explain that to me? Why do meteorologists say there's a temperature and then the wind chill? Because the wind chill, it, or like the feels like temperature. If it feels like three degrees, isn't it just three degrees then? How does that work? I think, uh, I, here think we go. The, I think the temperature is something that you can actually measure. It's like barometric, like there's a true measurement to it. That's why you can have it like in the air and it like picks up and gives you a real data point. But the real feel of wind, I believe, is more like mathematical then. Like you take wind speed plus temperature plus direction of the wind. That gets you your real feel. Now, I I can throw a wrench into this as well because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense when Fahrenheit is already a temperature measurement to measure how the air feels where Celsius is measuring off of based off of water and with zero being freezing and a hundred being boiling where Fahrenheit is based off of how it feels to humans and a more like feels like temperature. What the hell's so going on right now? <laughs> with everything. This is like the is zero a number strove. Zero is not a number. All right. It's time to get to question four. Oh, good Pella, point. Of the Pella window into the opponent. We're running out of time. We still got to get two more questions in. Uh, but before we get to Pella question number four, Pella window to the opponent question four, Colin Russo, give me the quickest random question you have for the panel you can think of off the top of your head. Would you rather never get a cold again or never get stuck in traffic ever again? Oh. Never get stuck in traffic. That one's easy. Okay. What about never get sick again or never get cold? Uh, never get stuck in traffic. Again? Okay. It's going to get morbid, but does getting sick, like, does that include like cancer? 
Let's exclude terminal illness. Okay. I'm I'm sticking with my answer then. You're sticking with traffic. Yeah. Brad. Traffic infuriates me. I would say traffic too. Hunter Vaughn. See, I, I'm married to someone with a uh, who's immunocompromised, so I'm going to have to go with never getting sick because I feel like that well. would just be selfish. I thought about this. Well, I'm a selfish day. guy. I mean, that's just that's just. I know. I know you are. I thought about this on the 23rd, and I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah. For Why? Sure. Traffic. 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 I get sick the next day, and I'm like. <laughs> Fine. Sick little, it is. And I cold PTSD. All right. Let's get to Pella window to the opponent. Question number four of the evening. We are 0 for 3. We get number four, 1945 was the only year that Oklahoma State won a national title. What California school did they defeat to win the title? Was it A Pacific, B St. Mary's? Or C, USC. This is the end of World War II. <laughs> yes. Pacific, World War II, something to consider. <laughs> I think it's such a random answer. That's why I'm leaning with Pacific. Yeah. St. Mary's and USC team seem too obvious to me. Remember, we won the battle in the Pacific in 45. I Are you saying that, that that is like the, the the dupe answer? So did Pacific lose twice in 45? Wow. But Pacific. We beat the Pacific. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. No. Yeah. I got nothing. Pacific it is. Good. Final answer. Is that your final answer? Yes, it is. Nope. It was St. Mary's. We were never going to go to St. Mary's. That's no, we oh, yeah. No, we weren't. That was out I of the so confident in that one. That was you guys are really place. bad today. Yeah. Yeah, 0 for 4. Not great. Um, nine minutes, two seconds remaining in the guaranteed rate bowl. Badgers lead 24-14. It is now 3rd and 14 for Oklahoma State, who continues to take shots with their stud quarterback, Garrett Rangel, who is now 11 of 27 for 182 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception on the night. Uh, here we go, third and 14. Rangel dropping back. Heavy pressure coming, and he eludes open. left. Let's it fling wide open into Wisconsin territory. They're going to get Brought closer. Down yeah. 27-yard line. Huge gain there for Oklahoma State as uh, as Garrett Rangel connects with, uh, nice connects with Owens. They're going to get it close here. Would you rather be the president in the 70s, 80s, or 90s? Like of the United States? Correct. Bradley Norton, the most presidential man on this panel. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to go with the 80s. Um, economic. Uh, I feel like, yeah, they aren't. It's not. There's not too much. There's the Cold War, but like, there's not too much going. On. There's not too much crazy stuff going on. Yeah, great economic expansion. Um, <laughs> internet's not internet's not around yet, right? So you have to deal with that crap um, as a president. Uh, yeah, the '80s seem to be a good time to me <laughs> to be a president. Hunter, what do you think? I the '90s, I guess. Try and get ahead on the internet thing. Yeah. Yeah. You get ahead of it. You could just avoid it altogether if you go to like 70s. Well, no, but you can try and get ahead of it and then, you we know, invest in dominate that as a country. Yeah. Huh. All right. I need to look up who the presidents were and their tenure. Wait, we before you, it. hang on, hang on, hang on. Before you look up any presidents, have you already looked it up? No, I, I have not clicked on anything yet. How I'm many presidents can you name? Uh, I'm not going to do this right now. You want to go backwards or forwards? <laughs> I'm not doing this right now. You choose. I could probably name 14 of the 40, what are we at, 46? 47. 46. I, I don't know. 46, 46 think, of them right now. I think um, there's been 46 presidents. I could probably name like 
16 to 18 of them. I could probably do better than that. Could you name the first five? Uh, yeah, Washington, Adams. Who's third? There's another Adams. <laughs> the, the other Adams is fourth. No. Oh, God. Oh, no. Is the other Adams fifth? Oh, UW. He was eighth. Point. I think. Oh. No. Sixth? He was There's sixth. A, oh. Sixth. Quincy Adams was six. All right. So we got George Washington, John Adams. Uh, think of other significant American figures in that time period. Yeah. yeah was, was, but Jefferson was never a president, was he? Oh, oh no. <laughs> he was. Brad's shaking his head. He was. Okay. Jefferson. I honestly don't know what number four. I thought it was another Adams. That's pitiful. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful to, to perform like that. I'm not a history talker. It's quite, I didn't talk, bring it up. Talk bucks. to me about the Super Bowl champions. I'll do better there. Okay. Yeah, but that's not as fun. It's more fun to make you look dumb. <laughs> I, I, I am dumb. All right, I'm pulling up the list of the tenures so I can answer the initial question. Um, all right, who do we have in the 70s? We had Nixon. Nixon, oh, Nixon was in the 70s. Nixon, not a hot start. President. Fascinating not, person. 70s was a bad time to be president. Yeah, not a hot start. Then we had Post Gerald Vietnam. And, and civil Jimmy rights Carter. were just kind of cooling down. Inflation. Inflation. Yeah, I, 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 I think I'm going with the 80s as well. I think that's a good pick. I mean, all those. All those I was going to go with the '80s as well for the challenge. I would have liked the '70s. You know, po you know, you just had Woodstock. People are in some good hopes. You're out of Vietnam for the most part. How old are you again? Twenty. Did you just drop a Woodstock reference like it was nothing? Is Woodstock? Who doesn't know what Woodstock is? Uh, no, no, not. But. In your thought process of picking which decade you would like to be the president of the United States, you brought up Woodstock as one of your main points. 80s, too? You'd be able to go to all those Lakers-Celtics series? Fair. Go see the, the Mets in 86 over so, the Dodgers? So you, you, you're presidential. You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't have time to go to sporting events. Yeah, you do. You get, you get the best seats in the house. No, you have the country to run. <laughs> you have to go to... You could go to game. You could go to uh, game five in 1984 when Bird had 34 and 17. On um, by the way, this is a one score game, guys. Yeah, this, we we need to put together a little drive. We have to lock in here. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell did I miss? There's they an did. Oklahoma State field goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm too 17. busy. I'm too busy surfing the presidents of the United States. We've been doing this for three hours and 17 minutes at this point. Cut me a break. All right, one score game. Who's playing quarterback this drive? I want your predictions. Chase Wolf. I don't know if he's ready. He, he was he was in last uh you're yeah, you're gonna put Miles game. Burkett in for this drive of let's all drives. Let's let's see what he's Go got. Go get him, buddy. Do it. Let's see, let's this see what he's got. Moment. Do it. <laughs> this is the remember the Titans moment. Let's see what he's I got. Twelve brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. They're all looking to me. Let's see what he's got. No, it'll be Chase Wolf. Famous but. quote by Bart Starr in that ice bowl. After they ran that sneak the first time. Why do you know this? Kramer lost his footing and they weren't, they got stuffed. Then last play of the game, Starr goes up to Lombardi and he says, it's there. I just need to get my footing. It'll work that next time. And Lombardi, without saying a word, last play of the game, trying to win the game, he goes, then let's run it and let's get the hell out of here. No question <laughs> asked. Turned around, went right back in, ran the same play, scored. Wow. Amazing story, Colin Russo. Colin, you are full of just fascinating knowledge. That's fascinating. Run it, it get the hell out of here. <laughs> you got any more questions for us while we're in commercial break? Leading up to this uh, Wisconsin drive in a one-score game. I'll think of one. Give me a second. <laughs> well, that gives me a second to tell everybody. This is ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day's watch party of the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. 24-17, the score of Wisconsin leads Oklahoma State in the fourth quarter. On ESPN, I'm Alex Strofe alongside Brad Nortman, the former Badger, the great Colin Russo, the brilliant mind, and uh, the only person that actually went to work today, Hunter Vaughn, with us as well in the Park Bank ESPN Madison Studios. 
Share, like, subscribe, follow, all the in-betweens. Let us know. Uh, let us know where you're hanging from in the comments section. We'll feature comments throughout the remainder as they show the guaranteed rate bowl trophy on ESPN. That is a uh, it's a pretty trophy. What's the best trophy you ever got to hold, Brad? Um, do you not get to see the Super Bowl trophy before the game? No, he, he never won one, so we can't count. Yeah, that. I mean a- NFC Championship trophy. Um, is that called the George Hallis Trophy? That's correct. That's correct. Um, we got held that post game, and then like in the week leading up to when you leave for the Super Bowl, we had it like in our locker room, so you could like hold it and take a picture with it and stuff. How big um, is that thing? It's not big. It's not big. I mean, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Hard to say exactly, but like the size. I of like the, that you're looking for a prop. I know, looking yeah. for like props. Um, I don't know. It's like it, maybe 18 inches. I don't know if I'm. Do NFL players treat the Super Bowl trophy the way that hockey players do the Stanley Cup, where you can't touch it until you've won it? Um, I don't know if we'd ever, I don't know if I'd ever even have the ability to touch a Super Bowl trophy, if not for winning it. Um, how, how, how do they, how would NHL players get access to the Stanley cup? It, it, like if a buddy won it and then they take it around. Yeah. And it's even like, if you win your conference, like they say that you're cursed, if you touch the conference championship trophy. So like, they'll just skate oh, over okay. by the table and just take a picture with it. And they're like, okay, we have to go win the cup. Yeah. I, I actually, now that you bring up the Stanley Cup, I did hold the Stanley Cup. Um, did you? There, there, yep. There was a guy. What was his name? He was a Badger uh, hockey player. He went and played for the Blackhawks when they won it in 2010. And then you get the you get the cup for 24 hours, right? Like each player does. And you can do whatever the heck you want with it. So he went back to Madison with it. And we were in fall camp. And he came and spoke to our team, brought the cup. And like we all held it and took pictures with it. It's a big old cup. It's actually pretty heavy. And it's it looks like it's been through some some experiences. Dinged up. Did you disinfect it? Um babies are like baptized in it. Guys eat yeah. cereal and drink beer out of it. We, we talk never... we t- we're talking about Jake Skill. Uh or no. Jack or, or Jack Skill rather. Or Jake... that. Oh wow, what a play. Oh, oh boy. Batted away on third and two. Uh, Go the for other it. One, Jack Jack Dowell. Go for it. Um, I, I'd have to. I don't even know. I wouldn't even. I'm, I'm not sure. I'd know if I heard it. Go for it, Luke. So you didn't even know the guy, and he let you I'm hold the Stanley Cup. That's right. You're um, I think he was. I think he was, I think he was going to the KK with it. I think that was his plan. Oh man, great plan. <laughs> what a night! And, 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 right. he, and he knows he'd find Brad Norton in there. That's right. Pour another one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the animal. I, think, I think it was a hit. All right, things actually might get kind of interesting here. Yeah, the guaranteed right ball. It's, we outlasted uh, this whole time. It's the fifteenth punt. punt of the game. Oh my, that's a rocket! Great punt goes out of bounds near the ten yard line where Oklahoma State will take over. They're what down a great seven. Punt. 17 three thirty three to play in the guaranteed right ball. Brad, those line judges just eyeball it, right? Yeah, they. I think they do because that's so nice. often. Times they're so wrong. That sucks. Yeah, what's the, what's the, what's the worst memory you have of maybe a bad mark? Um, I don't really have. Well, I mean, I've had I had a couple of shanks in my day, so those those they just keep walking up, and you're like, dude, stop! I get it. I get the <laughs> bad punt, but stop walking. Um, they try. They say because I've I've pushed back. I'm like that ball went out of bounds ten yards further than what you're at. And they say they try to line themselves up with the like field umpire. The field Sorry. umpire tries to like stand right around where you punted the ball, and then they try to create like the midpoint between where the ball landed and him. So I don't know. I think that's BS. I think they're just guessing. I think you're probably right. Uh, Hunter Wooler, Bucky's doing a headstand in the background. You guys see this on the TV? That's Bucky's, unbelievable. Bucky's just Bucky. doing. Colin, Colin, Colin. <laughs> Headstand. Let's go. Can you, can you do a headstand for us? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> All right. Yes. I don't know if I can though. Wait, that's wow. a shot. Oh, taking a deep shot. Bang. Deep shot. Intercepted. Badger's interception. Let's go. 
Dort is running with it. Breaks the tackle. Oh, boy. Here we go. Ooh. Pass midfield. Oh, and he got taken out the legs. We're going to get a flag for that. Oh. Big return um, and a huge turnover forced by Jimmy Leonard's defense on the Jimmy Leonard farewell tour. And it I'm might not be push-ups, but damn it, we're getting some headstands. As Bucky does it in the background, Russo's giving us a headstand. All right, I think I got to go like yeah, – Yeah, you got to start in like that – like like, like, a, like an L, right? Figure four. Yeah, like an L, I think. Or no, like my feet up here and I'm going to kick myself up, right? Yep, yeah. Okay, I think that's – Boy, it. this thing on his computer. This can't end well. This is going to be rough. I don't want to <laughs> fall into the computer. <laughs> We want you to do that, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Heads down, legs up, in the air, one leg up. Oh, here we go. Can't commit. Got to commit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's close. <laughs> Come on, you got this. You got the seat of weight. Oh! <laughs> that was solid. That was pretty good. How'd that look? <laughs> <laughs> What I do for this string? Uh, the effort was there. <laughs> I can call though. That's pretty good. Uh, As I slid oh, in. My goodness, that was horrendous. What is <laughs> what? What, what is? Oh man. The things he does for this stream indeed. It's ESPN Wisconsin College game day. <laughs> 247 to play in the guaranteed rate bowl. Wisconsin with the football and the lead 24 17. Injured Oklahoma State player down on the field right now. Um, so I'm sure they'll step aside. Colin Russo pumping out push ups, doing headstands, kind of asking questions about the 1960s. It's just a, just a heck of a three and a half hour stream as we're with you across the ESPN Madison. Social platforms, Alex Drove, Colin Russo, Brad Nortman, Hunter Vaughn, hanging out on your uh, Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning at this point, Colin. If you were born not Packers into another NFL team's city's allegiance, what team would you choose? Buffalo. Oh, good answer. Brad? When am I born? 2000. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 1980. 1980. No, so Strofe wants Buffalo. He wants to lose four straight. Yeah, I'm a, That's his call. Hey, at least I get Jim Kelly, man. Yeah, <laughs> and they have some fun. Hey, at least my team's fun. getting there, right? Like, my Packers have gotten there once in my lifetime, tw- uh, three times in the last three decades. If they're born in the 70s, 90s, I think Steelers is the easy answer. Well, if you want to win, pick the Patriots. Yeah, and you're hitting your mid. Oh, good reverse, good reverse, Skylar Bell. Hello, 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 Skylar Bell. Hello, into the red zone. Huge carry. Huge. Trying to eat a lot of clock here. Couple runs. Huge carry. That was awesome. Hunter. Now, am I allowed to stick with the Cowboys if it's 1980? Sure. Because then I'm going with them. Why would you then? Why? Like the, the, the latter half of that is brutal. But then I'm going to be older when they were incredible. Like, I just remember the tail end of. You're talking the about in the 90s when they won three and fought four years? Yeah. Oh, and then, too, like, I was, I would have just been becoming a fan of them at the yeah, tail end. Two minutes left in a one score game. We're talking <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> All right. Here we go. As we go under the two-minute mark, five-yard carry on first and ten in the strong run. Oklahoma State red zone. Ches Malusi, my guy, man. He is uh, he is getting some workload tonight. He's got to be close to 100 yards now. Uh, not that close. 70s. 71, yeah. For those that care, if you partake in prize picks, Braylon Allen hit the over. On both touchdowns and yards. Are you rushing. just telling? Is are you just telling us that you participated in prize picks? I didn't, but we uh, had a little game of prop bets on the Great Dane Huddle, and Braylon Allen's over under for the day was one hundred and five and a half. As he is officially named the player of the game in the guaranteed rate bowl, is 
Grail it out. I've never liked that, that they name the player of the game when there's still two minutes left. It does seem early. Because uh, I know it's not likely, but theoretically, Oklahoma State could still win this thing, or at least tie it up, bring it to overtime. Anyway. True. Run the ball. As they will. Second and five, a minute 55. Wolf takes the snap. Here's the second down handoff. Sheriff Pelusi gets the first down, plows ahead, puts the Eat head that down. Clock. Eat that clock. Good. Yeah, I think that's uh, one timeout left for Oklahoma State. I think that will pretty much do it. As the clock continues to tick, as the Wisconsin faithful holding up their Ws. How nice would that be if uh, they score a touchdown and we all finish off the broadcast by doing 30 push <laughs> Not the way I want to go out. No. I'm hoping for a knee. I think you're going to get one. Yeah. Or you're going to get a uh, first down touchdown carry. You're getting a carry. Uh Uh-oh. All right. He's brought down. Two-yard gain. Minute to play. Second and goal. Needs 40, a 40 seconds on the game clock. Oh, no. They're letting this play. I don't want to do push-ups, Colin. That would be such a poetic way to end this stream. They're going to need it here. I mean, I, I've got to show so much respect to Colin Russo for his performance today. Yeah. Blocking out push-ups, doing they're a bucky, it. honorary they're bucky they're headstand. It, I mean, so, it's 135 on the East Coast. Bro, they're running it. Oh my God, Wolf. Wolf. Wolf gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Literally, is that an option? I mean, what was that? Play action, Wolf just ran with it. That was, they, they gave him one. Like, all right, you get one. <laughs> Try it. Do they run another play? No, I don't think no. so. We're going under yes. 10 seconds. Yeah, that'll do it. Wow. Let the celebration commence. Another bowl game victory. For the Wisconsin Badgers as they beat Oklahoma State in the guaranteed rate bowl, the final of 24 to 17. The Jim Leonard era comes to an end with a victory. Oh, look at him and Jim. Look at Jimmy and Luke there. A little handshake. And the Luke Fickle era begins. Why is the camera Badgers on him? Victory. Why is the camera on him? Because him and Gundy are shaking hands. No, but like, you know what I mean though, Brad, right? Yeah, they're, ma- they're making it about Fick. They're not giving Leonard his due. Eighth bowl victory in nine seasons for the Wisconsin Badgers. That is an incredible stat. It really is. They don't lose bowl games since uh, th- that, uh, well, I guess the Rose Bowl is, has been the Achilles heel the last decade and a half. Um, yeah. Obviously, the, the only one of the last nine years was the 2020 Rose Bowl against Justin Herbert and the Oregon Ducks. But it's a win for the Badgers. It's a win for us. Three minutes, three hours, 33 minutes. As this we, weekend, uh, yes. College football playoff. Who's going to move on? Give me uh, Michigan give me TCU. Two, Georgia, give, me, give, me, give, give me Michigan and Georgia. Yeah, yeah. give me that too. Then give me Georgia. I really want Michigan Ohio State. I do too, That'd but it was, so a, it was a, but it was a blowout in the regular season. TCU, it won't be the second time though. TCU, I would. I would. I would love Georgia. TCU wins it all. Wow. It's not happening. But no. I love a good underdog story. Love a good underdog story. All right, that does it for us tonight. You like my little villain pose I got right now? <laughs> you were a floating head at one point. Like your camera angle was just this. So we had that going for I us for a while. So funny. I but, was uh, laughing at myself just looking at it. Uh, appreciate you hanging out with us tonight uh, across the ESPN Mad- Madison digital platforms. It's been a blast, and the Badgers win 24-17 in the guaranteed rate bowl. Big thanks to Hunter Vaughn, Colin Russo, the Badger legend Brad Nortman, uh, Adam Mertz who joined us at halftime, and all of you for hanging out with us tonight. It was a blast. It was fun breaking it down. The Badgers win their eighth bowl game in nine years. Fellas, we end on a happy note. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody watching. This has been ESPN Wisconsin College Game Day.